and Michael Remus. What is up, everyone? Welcome to another edition of Winnipeg Sports Talk Daily. Andrew Patterson, Michael Remus with you. And the Winnipeg Jets are officially back. First day of training camp today out at the Hockey for All Center. We were both there to take in the early session. Saw Mark Scheifele, Connor Hellebuck, and uh, many of the Jets regulars out there, as well as a glimpse at some of the young players back from the Young Stars tournament, trying to make a name for themselves with the big club. Um, we'll get to all of it. Scott Billick was there. He will jump on with us in about 20 minutes or so. We'll also talk about uh, Jet stories, NHL stories, <clears throat> maybe a little football as well with Brandon Rewicki. And we will hear from both Mark Scheifele and Connor Hellebuck, who spoke today after the first training session. Should be a great show. Certainly was great to see everybody, a number of WSTers. Nice to see some people repping the WST merch out at the camp this morning. Nice to see Dallas and the rest of the crew. Um, and speaking of big thanks to uh, for folks with support, obviously everybody in chat, hit that subscribe button if you haven't already. Inching closer to 10,000 subscribers, which we're hoping to get to by opening day of the NHL season on the uh, 11th of October. And a big thanks to the sponsors that make Winnipeg Sports Talk happen every day, including Cool Bet, Princess Auto, Consolidated Supply, Boston Pizza and Royal Sports, Vita Health, Wallace & Wallace, F Apparel, Nick & Nicky DQ Group, Little Brown Jug, Canadian Club, Manitoba Battery, Aquatech, Modern Man, Assiniboia Downs, great last night of racing yesterday, our friends at Breezy Bend, Aikens Lake, and of course we will get to a why not question of the day for Not Autocorp over at Waverly and McGilvery. Michael Remus, good to see you this morning, and uh, good to be back at the rink. That was a fun, uh, fun morning. Yeah, I'm a bit out of breath, had to race home, stayed for the Shifley and Hellebuck availabilities, raced home. It was stayed within the speed limit, of course, mostly rushing to unpack all my equipment, getting set up for this, hmm. trying to get a something to eat quickly or, you know, I won't be able to do the show. I got to get food in me, Hustler. So I'm feeling good. Hockey's back. They're back on the ice. Uh, very cool to see everyone, not just, you know, the rookies like development camp. That would, would have been the last time, but everyone's out there. Mark Shifley, Kyle Connor, Connor Hellebuck, Josh Morrissey. Uh, was there for the first session, so uh, it was awesome. Uh, who I said hi to Dan Robertson, who was on the show yesterday. Check out the video on our channel for that little, you know, storyline rundown. Nice to see everyone. It was good, good times. Yeah, the first day of camp is great. It, in a lot of ways, it sort of feels like the first day of school. Um, it certainly is the first day of a long, long run for a hockey club that, that will begin today. We'll go 82 games in the regular season, and we'll see whether it will include any playoff dates um <clears throat> yeah you mentioned it was great to see dan he and kevin sawyer were there got a chance to chat with Polly edmonds and scott unger for a while rennie rennie is in mid-season form um he certainly got the best dressed of everybody in the assembled winnipeg media that was there uh pretty much everyone was there because sarah Vorleski popping by as well uh the whole crew from the sun freezer and uh, of course scott billick and Ken, you know, Ken was wearing this toque. It was, uh, it was a blue and white toque. It was actually TCB, but I came up from behind and I thought that he was already rocking the Winnipeg Free Press toque. First week, new company man. Um, but yeah, no, great to see everybody and obviously great to see everybody on the ice. Now listen, we will talk more about what we saw, the way things looked, what the coaches were up to, but... 
you know, I had to leave a little earlier because I had to just do the lock shop at noon, which was when Hellebuck and Shifley were speaking. Um, we've been sort of anticipating a very interesting media day today. Um, you know, before we get to hear it, how big were the scrums? I mean, as far as local media goes, I was expecting some of the biggest scrums we've maybe ever seen uh, in and around those players today. Did, uh, did it come as expected? Yes. Okay, here is the Mark Shafley scrum. Show it to Connor Ravchek taking this picture. Like, you couldn't even... You couldn't even get in there, Hustler. Uh, this is Shafey. Like, everyone is there. So many cameras, like news media and, um, you know, and what, you know, print or sports media. Um, oh, yeah, there's my, my camera in there. Rennie's in front, Kelly Moore, Jamie Thomas. There's Darren and Paul Friesen back here. Uh, these, here I see Dave with the illegal curve mic uh, over there. It was, it was nuts, Huss. Um, everyone, I mean, it was so crazy. Like, uh, Jacob Stoller, who does Hockey News and Yahoo, he just had a one-on-one -on -one with Gabe Velarde. You think people would want to talk to Gabe Velarde because he's, what, he's the new guy here, but no, no, no. You could have talked to, like, Josh Morrissey was just sitting there. No one was going up to him, but <laughs> everyone was just waiting for Shifley and, and Hellebuck. So there's, that was the scene uh, at the uh, Hockey for All Center this afternoon, like noon. Yeah, I would have loved to uh, have been able to uh, to chat with a few of those guys. And again, we're going to be spending a lot of time out there over the next couple of days uh, because the plan is we're going to get out there early tomorrow into our location for Fan Fest on Saturday, get hooked up and actually do the show from the Hockey for All Center, which, um, which will be great. And then, of course, we're going to be there on Saturday um, grabbing a bunch of content, potentially depending on how things work, might even go live for a little bit. Really looking forward to seeing the uh, the jersey unveiling that we talked about a little bit uh, yesterday, and we'll certainly have plenty of content on the Winnipeg Sports Talk channel for all of that. Um, but Remo, as much as it was the first day of training camp, and I mean the stories, we'll get to this with Scott in a few minutes. Um, the stories around training camp almost secondary to the stories of the off season, which of course was the future of Connor Hellebuck and Mark Shifley. And uh, I have to say, not surprisingly, um, and, and and again, well, we'll listen to this in a minute, but I think both of them came in exactly as what we've said, you know, open mind on everything, um, focusing on hockey and, uh, you know, trying to take care of this one media session today and then uh, get going, leaving a lot of things to the agents and just worrying about being uh, good teammates and uh, working ahead to get ready for October 11th with the rest of the squad. Yeah, I mean, Mark Shifley said he hasn't thought at all about uh, his, you know, pending UFA status and his next contract. Like, why would he think about that one? Uh, he's here playing for the Winnipeg Jets <laughs> right now. He's here to win. He's here to make the playoffs. He's here to win the Stanley Cup. He's here to work on his game and get better every day. So that is what Mark Shafley is about right now. And uh, I think it's exciting that, you know, finally we've been speculating on this all summer. Uh, they're back and, you know, you kind of figured they weren't really going to say much, but everyone wanted to ask the questions anyways. And um, they haven't closed the door on returning. That was one thing that Mark Shafley said as well. So we'll see what happens. He said he hadn't had any conversations about an extension as well, really. So, uh, but it seems like, you know, something could happen. During the year, the door isn't closed. The door hasn't been closed. Um, but uh, you know, look, you got a bit of a different squad. We did see the lines in action with Gabe Velarde, with uh, Shifley and Connor. I mean, first training camp ever without Blake Wheeler, which I hadn't really thought about walking in, but it was pointed out to me uh, when I posted on Instagram the Jets forward line. Someone's like, "Wow, it's so weird not seeing Wheeler's name." I was like, "You know what? It is. It is kind of weird." That, that was exactly what I said to most of the guys. I'm like, this is the first training camp session, you know, or first day of training camp since 2011 that Blake Wheeler hasn't been a part of. And, you know, I know it's something that we've kicked around as to what, you know, what the benefits, I guess, of the teams, I mean, big investment in buying out Blake Wheeler will be um, because certainly you've got a whole um, of a player that was quite productive last year. Um, and it's not like you could really feel anything different. Um, you, know, you know, maybe we'll find out more from uh, players as we uh, continue going on. Um, 
but yeah, it was a little weird not seeing 26 out there. I mean, he had he has been such a huge part of this organization since day one. Um, to not have Blake around was um, was a little strange, but that is the way they've gone. And of course, no Pierre Luc Dubois. We did get a chance to see two of the three LA Kings come in. Alex Iafalo was in the other group, uh, but Gabriel Velarde, as you mentioned, playing with uh, Mark Scheifele and Kyle Connor out there. And, um, and I enjoyed seeing Rasmus Kapari with, uh, with Morgan Barron quite a bit. And obviously there was a whole bunch of different drills. There were one-on-ones, there were two-on-twos, there were five-on-fives, um, and a whole, bunch of, uh, a, a whole bunch of other options. Of the, of the, and then, of course, a healthy bag skate at the end, of which um, Mark was right at the front of the group, uh, group on all of that. Yeah, and you were talking about the lines here. Uh, here, who is going to be the first to tweet out the lines on day one of training camp? Well, I know Billick had them. Mike had them too, as well. Um, the, Did we get like who was first on the feed though? I mean, remember we had cool bet lines oh, on that. We okay, had so here's ten. Billick was at ten thirty, and he's coming okay. up next. So that here, let me type in Mike McIntyre, and what was Mike at? I don't know if anyone else had them. Maybe Mike didn't have them. I think he did a thread. And it's, oh, here's Mike had it at 1034. So Billick beat Mike. Billick, Billick right now, the clubhouse leader in line tweeting speed <laughs> um, early, early at this point in the season. A great start for Scott when it comes to it. What about, uh, what about Ken? Oh, we're going to check in on everyone? Sure, here. Well, I'm, inter- I'm interested in Ken because Ken, it's usually Ken. And Mike and Scott often going Ken. into a tweet off. Ken, oh, of Ken was lines. first. He was 10.24 a.m. Whoa. Yeah, whoa, he probably Ken. had that thing ready. He had it all ready to go. And then it was in the drafts, I think. <laughs> and then fired it out. Well, okay, chalk one up for Kenny. Quick draw, Ken Weeb with the first tweet. Uh, but uh, as you can see, the lines, Connor Shifley, Velarde, Kapari with Baron and Nemetsnikov. Gus was out there with Vial and Colby Barlow. Uh, Lucius with uh, Reichel and Torgerson of the uh, the groups that were out there oh. today. Most interesting thing coming out of just how things were set up, and again, things will change when everything gets into one group, um, was the fact that the youngster, Remo, Elias Salmonson, getting a chance to start out with Josh Morrissey. And... He, he's a guy that I have a hard time keeping my eyes off of. I mean, he does so many things very subtly well that you're really trying to pick up the intricacies of his game when you're watching him. Um, but, man, he's smooth, makes a great pass, um, was very competitive in uh, all of the drills. And I'll say this, did not look out of place playing with Josh Morrissey. Again, I realize it's the first morning session of day one of training camp. But it was interesting that the team put him where they did with Josh Morrissey, I think, to get a real indication for a little while of how he uh, fares playing with some of the top uh, top guys on the squad. Hey, we talked so much about Elias Salmonson this summer. We talked about him at the draft. Oh, let's, let's talk about last year's picks. Or, oh, this guy's pretty good. I'll talk about him at Number one defensive camp. prospect for the Jets. Talk about him at the, yeah, drafted round two, 55 overall last year. Uh, you know, hadn't really talked about him a lot, really, until maybe leading up to the draft. And I was thinking to myself, have we just spent, like, way too much time talking about this guy? He was a second-round pick, but there he was. I think it was justified. If you listen to the show, maybe you weren't that surprised that he was top pair with Josh Morrissey. That's quite a spot, Hus. Beside the number one defenseman, day one of training camp, beside the guy, what is it, didn't get the captaincy, but he was certainly... Uh, you know, number t- number two choice uh, behind Lowry. So I mean, that says a lot. I think of what the, where he is on the depth chart, and wonder like what does that mean for? Because like Billy Hainel used to be the number one prospect, but I mean, giving Sal Munson the first skate right side D with Josh Morrissey. That's I mean, is that a statement, Huss? Uh, yeah, I think it is a little bit. I mean, I don't think it has much to do with this year because I think we all expect that he'll head back to the Swedish Elite League and and play a big role in one of the top teams. 
but in some ways I think it's foreshadowing to maybe a year from now when Elias will come over, I think with a real legitimate chance of being on the squad. And, you know, from talking to everybody in the organization, the likes of Jimmy Roy, I mean, they were just so pleased with everything this young man does. Um, if anything, it's a bit of a tip to the cap, tip of the cap to where he fits in amongst the hierarchy of the youth and the upcoming prospects for this team. Um, but never a bad thing to get a look with uh, the number one defenseman if you're a young, young guy trying to uh, trying to crack the squad. Billick's coming up in just a second. He's just getting set up. Um, but what, we've got a couple of clips from Mark Shifley. We'll hopefully have more from Hellebuck a little later on. But why don't we play these uh, because we're certainly going to be talking about it with, uh, with Scott coming up in just a minute. Um, so a uh, shout out to Connor and Remo for uh, getting in there and uh, getting this. And uh, listen, Mark Shifley took the podium today, long awaited first media appearance of the year and uh, said he's excited to be back. 100%. We got we got some new guys, which is different. You know, a lot of new faces. So that's that's obviously exciting. And you know, obviously saw some friends go, which is always tough. Um, you know, but that's the that's the nature of the business. But you know, it's it's great to just get on the ice. Uh, you know, you feel like the last couple of weeks you're just kind of waiting to this day. So um, you know, it was awesome to get on the ice and have a good practice. And um, it was awesome. From your perspective, Mark, I mean, you know, this is the 13th year that you've had a contract in the NHL, but the first that you're going in not knowing what the next year is going to look like. Uh, how much time have you given to considering that and preparing for that this uh, off season? Honestly, not a whole lot. Like, you know, it's another another hockey season. I'm a hockey player. I love, love the game. I love to skate. I love to, you know, get ready and, and, and improve on my game. So, you know, it was the same, same as always. All right, so there's Mark Scheifele with some of his first opening statements. And again, thanks to the Jets for that video we had a camera there unfortunately it was uh locked at that time and uh since further review has been done on the equipment the lock button has been figured out but thanks to the jets for having that here's one more for shite before we uh, hook up with scotty billick and it's just a little bit more on uh you know not focusing a lot on the contract letting the agents do the work and being here to play hockey honestly it's not really on my mind it's not really not really uh you know, I have, I have one year left in my deal, and I'm, you know, I'm here to focus on this team and, and you know, helping this team succeed, and, and, you know, that's my really my own focus. Can you see a future together beyond this year with the Jets? Yeah, for sure. I, you know, I've told them I'm open to, open to staying, and, um, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm definitely open to, to staying here. I'm, I've been a Winnipeg Jet for, yeah, thir this is my 13th camp, so it's been a, been a long time, and, you know, enjoyed every day of it, and, you know, I'm definitely open to staying. That is crazy, though, when you think of what he just said. 13. 18th camp first ever player drafted by the Winnipeg Jets uh, and a very a very different probably line of questioning than in most of the other years uh, but certainly putting on a, a, a you know putting the best foot forward talking about the upcoming season sounding a little excited to get things going and as I say we'll see Billick was there we'll talk to him about this as well and of course Connor Hellebuck in addition to Mark Shifley and We'll have some more clips a little later on in the program after we chop it up with Scott and with Brandon. Um, just before we bring in Billick to the program, uh, let me shout out our friends over at Modern Man Barber Shops. Now with eight locations in the city of Winnipeg, including their newest locations in either Pembina Highway, right by Bishop, or on the east side of the city on Plessy Road. Modern Man Barber Shops offer a variety of grooming services they got you covered, guys, with haircuts, beard shaping, shaves, color services, and more. An amazing selection of both hair and beard products. Make an appointment and book your look via modernmanbarber.com for any of the eight locations. And you can also give them a follow on Instagram over at Modern Man Barber Shops. Uh, well, man, these last couple days have been so gorgeous. We did have a little bit of extra pool time, but as the pools close... You can already start thinking about making the plunge in 2024 with our friends, the leaders in pools, both in ground and above ground over at Aquatech. Uh, but you might not realize that Aquatech also are the leaders in home renovations with thousands of renos as their foundation. Now is the time to enhance your kitchen, your bathroom, or even add a man cave to your home. And Aquatech can help you with all of that. Visit aqua-tech.ca to learn more about their whole home renovations, including 
financing options. Um, well, we saw a lot of players out there. The batteries are recharged for the Winnipeg Jets heading into training camp. Uh, how about the batteries on your vehicles as we get ready for a Winnipeg winter? Do not wait until it's minus 30 and you realize you're screwed. Get proactive on that. Talk to the folks at Manitoba Battery. Great testing as well if you want to see where your battery is at heading in to the upcoming winter. But, of course, the best prices in town for any battery you need. All makes and models at Manitoba Battery. Beating the pants off the big box stores on price. And even better, their service. They'll deliver it to you for free anywhere in the city of Winnipeg with any purchase over $60. It's that easy. Check them out at manitobabattery.com. Give them a phone call to order as well. And if you're in the neighborhood, you can always pop by, see Donnie and his great staff at 1026 Logan Avenue at Manitoba Battery. And hey, a big cheers to our friends at Canadian Club. No bomber game this week, but IG Field will be rocking a week tomorrow for a Grey Cup rematch between the Bombers and the Toronto Argonauts. Of course, Canada's favorite Canadian whiskey, Canadian Club, is the official spirit of the Winnipeg Blue Bombers. Available at the Rum Hut and throughout IG Field and at your local Manitoba Liquor Marts as well. And don't forget Canadian Club and Ginger Ale, pre-mixed cocktail and cans. You can pick that up at Liquor Marts, but also at your local beer store. All right, let's head out to the Iceplex and welcome in Scott Billick from day one of training camp. Scotty, what's going on? How are you? Yeah, the day keeps just going here, Huss, because Nick, all you is... I don't know. Sorry, I just muted myself. Uh, Nikolai Ulus just left the ice, so that's something to watch. I think he lasted almost 17 minutes. So that'll be something to certainly keep your eyes on uh, as we go. But yeah. Can you I, hear me? Or I look yeah, through. Yeah, we can hear you. There's lots going on in the background, but we can hear you. Um, so let me get this straight. The first thing that we're getting it and Nikolai Ehlers in the second group with the rest of the group was out there for 17 minutes and had something happen. I mean, uh, did you, did yeah, you see, see it? Exactly was it just what a... happened to him? Yeah. I, it looks like precaution at this point, but we'll, we'll sort it out obviously as we go here. But, uh, yeah, I mean, I uh, already had a busy morning with Connor Hellebuck and, and Mark Shifley talking. Now we got, Nikolai Ehlers with potential some sort of injury, I assume. Jeez. Don't usually leave 17 minutes into the first week of camp, or first day of camp. So, yeah, hopefully that's not nothing too bad. So we'll, we'll find out after after practice, obviously. Yeah, no doubt about it. Not uh, not the way certainly Nikolai Ehlers wanted to start camp, considering, uh, you know, the injury issues he had last year. That being said, maybe you just get, uh, get him out early and uh, hopefully miss as few games as possible. That'll be something that obviously we'll follow. Um. Scott, uh, you know, we can talk about what we saw on the ice and some of the players that maybe stood out, how things went, but let's face it, day one was all about two longtime Jets with uncertain futures and Mark Shifley and Connor Hellebuck. Let's start with Shifley. Just heard a couple of the clips. We saw the massive scrum around 55. What did you think about uh, what he had to say? Um, just his general body language, uh, both on the ice and when he was speaking to the media and uh, the message he had for the media and obviously Winnipeg Jet fans. Well, the first thing that struck me, he was a little more forthcoming than Connor Hellebuck. I mean, I think that was the maybe the thing. I mean, he he actually said, you know, you know, he would be willing to resign here um, and, and he's open to that. Connor Hellebuck didn't exactly say those words. Um, so that's, you know, something, again, you're always looking for, you know, what they say, the words that they use, the body language. Shifley's was, you know, better. It looked like Shifley is um, rejuvenated again and, and ready to go. But at the same time, um, neither of these guys really, you know, would say and commit their future to this this team either. Um, so you don't expect that, obviously. Uh, you don't want to, um, you know, give anything away. There's obviously, you know, the contract talks that need to be happening and, and that sort of thing. But, you know... Yeah. I thought Shifley was a little more forthcoming, um, but we'll see. I, I, this is part of the deal, right? I mean, we go through this this year, you know, we went through it last year kind of with Pierre-Luc Dubois, right? And he said all the same sort of things at the start of last year. Um, and then we obviously know what happened to Pierre-Luc Dubois, and he's now a Los Angeles king. So, um, you know, Shifley talked a lot about 
um, leaving it up to his agent, his representation. They'll do what's best for him. Um, you know, they know what's going on. Well, you know, obviously we know that Mark also knows what's going on here as well. So, so you know, I don't think we learned anything that we didn't know today. Um, you know, other than Mark saying he's open to resigning here. I think that became somewhat clear over the last month or so um, here. But, um, you know, I thought Hellebuck was a little more interesting in terms of kind of how he approached well, what we, he said. And yeah. well, let me, let's get, we'll get to Hellebuck in a minute. Um, yeah. But the one thing, I mean, yeah, I mean, we certainly heard loud and clear that Shifley, I mean, open to anything. Um, talk about how long he's been with the Winnipeg Jets. Um, but he also said he didn't think that there's been anything offered to him right now. And I think that was, I mean, something that I think we sort of knew, but it was interesting to hear him say, listen, I'm open for anything. I'm going into this last year. Um, but the other side of that is that that really hasn't, I think, been a focus of the Winnipeg Jets at this point, at least heading into training camp right now. Yeah, I mean, you've got to think about this, you know, it, Mark talked a lot about the business side of the game today. And, and, and honestly, I think the Jets also on their side have to think about the business side of this as well. And so if they haven't had extensive extension con conversations yet, it could be because the Jets also need to see something from Mark Shifley um, to, to prove to them that, that they should offer him an extension here. Like, I, I think we, we've talked a lot about, well, you know, at least in terms of Connor Hellebuck, it's, it's different in that sense because you know what you're getting from Connor Hellebuck from game to game. But when it comes to Mark Shifley, we saw at times last year where he completely was checked out, right? I mean, I think if the Jets are going to extend a guy like Mark Shifley, they also, it's almost got to be proof to them too that he can come into camp, show initiative, show the leadership that may have been lacking in the past. All of those things. I, I think, you know, if the Jets are learning as they go here on on this, you, you can't just, you know, back up the brain truck to Mark Shifley, give him a term he wants, and then hope everything sort of falls into place. Because I think there's been things over the last couple of seasons that are, you know, somewhat red flags when you want to sign a guy. And it's sort of my theory is, you know, you had this, this top line center on the market potentially this whole summer, and there wasn't really a team that, that we ever heard about that really came out and made a stab at, at Mark Shifley. And to me, that's a little telling um, in terms of what Mark's reputation might be like around the league right now. Um, so, but there were certain things you saw today, and, and I'll tell you one thing that I saw on the ice today that I thought was quite interesting, and, and I know I, I heard in the, while I was waiting to come on about that he's not wearing the Nike cap this year, he's wearing a Jets cap with the logo on it. But I thought one thing, when they were bag skating the guys at the end of practice today and the, the, the group one session, it was Mark Scheifele leading that bag skate. for clues and and that sort of thing but you know to me watching that part of mark shakely seeing him leading that bag skate uh, it, it's just something of note right i mean it was him and josh morsey the two guys on the ice that are wearing letters this year adam lowry's in the current group that's on the ice right now but to see mark shakely out there leading the bag skate that, that's an interesting it's an interesting just an interesting tidbit that i, I took from today from mark outside of what he said and all that, because a lot of it, yeah. again, as we've talked about, is, you know, the business side of it. These guys don't usually, you know, talk about those types of things, and they, they often shy away from or deflect the conversation to their agents, who we don't often talk to either. When they yeah, their, uh, well, I, I mean, listen, God knows uh, we and uh, I've had plenty of takes on Mark, and I, like I think many people, um, would need to be convinced that it would be uh, – you know that that would be in the Jets' best interest long term to go in and uh, you know an ink an extension that's going to take him through the well into the back nine of his career as he'll be, I guess, thirty one years old when uh, an extension would uh, would begin. But I'll tell you what, I think myself and a lot of other people will be far, would warm up to that idea a heck of a lot more. Um, you know, seeing you know him follow through on a lot of things that, you know, he sort of said and, and, and to your, to your point, I mean, really showed on the ice today. And again, I don't make too much about what guys wear. Um, but it was quite obvious for a long time, for a long time. I, I, listen, I mean, I, I, listen, I know Blake's gone, but I don't think there was very many captains in the league. And this goes back to a couple years that 
you know, we're always wearing their own brand as opposed to the team that they're the captain of. And I, and I wasn't sure whether, the, you know, I mean, I mean, Mark famously, even last year, was always wearing that Nike cap. Like, I didn't really think about it right away. But when I did see that those comments in the chat, that is the first time in a long time that white Nike lid wasn't on him uh, when you're doing it. And listen, I think that's, that's a really good thing um, when it comes to, I mean, you want him to be very much a part of the team because let's face it, Scott, there is the potential, you know, yep. with Adam Lowry being the captain and let's face it. I don't think Mark, as much as he is one of the A's and they <laughs> mentioned that he was a candidate. I mean, I think that was a two horse race the entire way. And with Blake being gone, um, who was always Mark's running mate, I think there is the potential that, you know, maybe he isn't as a big a part of it as he had been before, and you wonder how that affects it. Um, and certainly from day one, it seems like he's saying the right things, putting the right foot forward, and um, you know what? Maybe we will see a big turnaround uh, with him. I, listen, bottom line is you got to get it done on the ice, and that's the one thing that certainly offensively we haven't been worrying about. Um, but listen, if we're talking about proving yourself to – the fans, the organization, and most importantly, at the end of the day, it's proven himself to Rick Bonus that he's going to be a guy because we knew how things went south last year uh, in that season, in particular when it came to Mark. Yeah, I, I agree. I mean, it's really tough to dissect day one of training camp, right? Because often these guys are all excited. They all want to say, they come in, they want to impress. They all want to say the right things. You know, it's just kind of how it they. And so you're right. I mean, you know, I, I think, I, I honestly, I think there, there's, there's definitely a prove it on both sides of this, on this thing for, for both the team and for Shifey. I, I, I think it's more slanted when it comes to for Connor Hellebuck in his case, but I think for definitely for Mark Shifley, there, there's definitely, I, I think, some more hesitancy than there maybe used to be regarding Mark over the last few years because I, I, I think. I think if we notice it, you know, the media obviously knows it. We see it often, you know, behind the scenes sometimes. That's the thing. I think the fans have certainly noticed a, a difference in Mark Shifley. Uh, you know, let's say it's from, you know, 2018, 2017, 18 season. I think, you know, his kind of a whole attitude and demeanor has changed a little bit. And I think last year, you know, I had a really good chat with him in Banff last year when they were on their little uh, um, uh, team excursion or whatever. But I, I do think that, yeah, I, I think there's definitely a um, – yeah, there, there's something on both sides there, and I think both and, – and, and just for Mark's own future, um, you know, wherever he ends up after this season, um, I think he has to put his best foot forward, right? I mean, th this is a guy who's going to probably get his last big ticket in the NHL, um, and if teams are maybe shying away from him this summer, um, they certainly don't want teams shying away from him next summer if he does make it to the UFA status. So um, I, there, there's a lot on the line this year for Mark Shifley, and I, I do think he needs to, um, yeah, he's got to come in and, and, you know, put on that face and, and make sure that face stays on all season and not even, you know, not just when times are, times are going okay. Yeah, no, that is a, a great point. And again, you know, I've said this before in the program. I mean, I would love, listen, I, I mean, Maybe unlike most of the other media, I mean, listen, I want this team to do well. I want to see them win. I want to see them go to the playoffs. I want good things for the Winnipeg Jets. And Mark Shifley is such an important part of that, that, you know, if he could come in, um, maybe, um, you know, just be better and more committed on some of the things that had been problematic <laughs> before. Um, the talent is yeah. certainly there. And in some ways, um you know, maybe a turnaround or a coming full circle back to the guy that we saw in the early part of his career would be just an amazing story and would be great for the Winnipeg Jets. So um, even if I would have to OBA an extra 20 bucks from our <laughs> wagers on the summer, I'd be happy to pay it if that meant uh, that meant for it. So, uh, I mean, a nice start. We heard what Mark had to say. Um, you kind of compared Connor Hellebuck and Mark Shifley, but, I mean, we haven't played any of the Hellebuck clips. Um, take us yeah. back to Heli. What was, uh, well, how was he sounding? What was his body language like? Um, yeah, he's one of my favorite guys to maybe he is my favorite guy to listen to because he always yeah. has interesting things. He doesn't seem to have much of a filter. Has a filter been added in the off season for Connor Hellebuck, Scott? <laughs> I mean, he doesn't want to talk about his con. You know, he, the one thing that he said is he doesn't really want to talk about his contract. It, uh, you know, it's personal. 
when he was asked a question about, um, you know, kind of what it's going to take for him to maybe sign here. I asked him a couple questions about, you know, do, do you need the team to kind of prove something to you? You know, because, you know, one of the things that he said was he wants to win and, and he wants to win a Stanley Cup and he wants to play somewhere where he has afforded those opportunities. If we go back to the end of last season, you know, he, he's one of Vesna. He's, you know, a perennial Vesna candidate. He's done a lot of the things that he, he wants to do at, you know, personally uh, in terms of his own, you know, kind of accolades. But as a team, um, what he said loud and clear last year is he wants to play on a winner and he wants to win a Stanley Cup. And that's his only kind of remaining goal. Um, as an NHL goaltender. So, uh, you know, this morning, you know, he didn't come out and say that he's necessarily open to resigning here, but he did say, you know, the words, right? Like, Shifley was very um, forthcoming on that uh, when what he said, Connor, less so, all doors are open. All, you know, he, he, he said, you know, basically there's nothing not on the table at the moment. Um, but, but, you know, he hasn't committed to it. And, you know, it, We'll see. I mean, I, you know, this is the thing, right? I, 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 I think for for Connor Hellebuck, he needs something proved to himself, a lot proved to himself, and and not to himself, sort of proven from the team, um, because you know, the last couple of years, and even the last I maybe mean, four or five years, you know, this team has been you know a playoff team, sure, but they haven't been a a, a true Stanley Cup contender, um, and that that's what Connor Hellebuck wants to play for right now, right? So. You know, if you can see it, and I think a lot of the things too going on um, right now is, you know, what's going to happen with this team? Like, what? How competitive is this team? What is this youth injection, this depth that this team has added through the Dubois trade? Um, you know, what is that going to look like over the next couple of weeks in training camp, even, um, and and then obviously going into the start of the regular season. So, you know, but I, I honestly, I think like for Mark I, and 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 the team, I think there's kind of proof that needs to be shown on both sides. But I think, like I said earlier. It's almost slanted more in Connor Hellbuck's direction um, that he needs to see something from the team that convinces him, like that he can actually, if he was to sign three, four, five years here, that there is a chance going forward, that that window isn't closed, that there isn't going to be, you know, a rebuild after he sort of signs here, right? Um, and, and I think I think that's probably true of Mark as well, because you know we all know that Mark Schleifle wants to win the Stanley Cup too, but I do think that for Hellebuck, I mean, I think over the course of the season. And he, and he said himself today, time is on his side, right? I mean, he has time to kind of evaluate what's going on, what the team is doing, how they're kind of moving forward, um, especially with some of the big changes that happened this summer. So, so you know, obviously, you know, I, I took from both these guys that, you know, this is going to go into the season. Um, whether or not it's a distraction, I guess we'll find out. Um, but, you know, both of these guys, obviously, I think are looking for some proof. Um, uh, that 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 there's a there's a good that there's a reason to resign. You know, they might offer him the most money or or the better term or whatever. Um, I think in both cases, if nothing else, both want to win a Stanley Cup, and at the end of the, at the end of the day, um, they're going to look for the right situation to do that, and that could be Winnipeg. Um, but it, it's going to take some time, I think, for both to to kind of see if that's actually um, you know a viable option for both of them heading into free agency next summer. Yeah, uh, listen, I think there's a, we're in the discovery process uh, and will be <laughs> through the first 20 to 30 games of this season on yeah. where those players are at, how they're feeling. And obviously, you know, so much of it, I'm sure, will depend on if, teams winning, if the team is winning hockey games or not. Um, Isn't it sort of like the fans too, right? Like, I mean, this only for the team, but I think the fans also want to see the same sort of proof too, right? Fans want to see that this team is moving in the right direction and, and that they're going to be a competitive team, right? I mean, in terms of, you know, for fans, it's different. You're opening your wallet, you know, every couple of nights to come to a game or whatever. Or you're, maybe you're on the fence about season tickets or whatever. I mean, I think there's a lot of proof that needs to be shown to a lot of people from this team this year because there has been a lot of change and there hasn't been that success that that this team, that, that the fans obviously want and the players too because – you know, but all these players want to win a Stanley Cup, and sometimes I, you know, the league's changing a little bit too. Right? You guys are going to situations that put them in. They might take less money. They might take less term. You know, so we'll see what happens. But uh, you know, I think this, they're very much in the same boat as, as as a lot of people in the fan base that they want to see some proof that there's going to be some 
you know, yeah. there is a path forward to success. For sure. I mean, then again, I mean, you talk to some people, I mean, they were hoping they blew it up and traded everybody and didn't care about how the team does well this year. And I mean, they're thinking about a big picture, long-term thing. Um, And again, I mean, God knows we've spent enough time when there was nothing to talk about, talking about exactly that, the pros and cons from it. Um, They feel that they've got the talent in this room. Um, And and I do believe, I mean, you know, if you ever were going to go that route, I mean, you're talking about major, major surgery to the roster to oh, yeah. pushing things ahead. Um, but Matt, I mean, and, you know, and we're just getting word that the Jets have signed Colby Barlow to his uh, ELC Didn't announcing that, that today. Yeah. Um, you know, there's a lot of really t- yet talented young players that are in the mix for, you know, these next couple of years. Um, but as I, I mean, to me, I, and again, this is just me personally, but I remember saying this at the end of the year when I, like so many people were really, distressed about just the direction of the club. And we'd seen that before in the second half of the year. Um, yep. Like, would I love to have a team that's, you know, capable of winning the Stanley Cup every year? Absolutely. But as someone that's going to be there, win or lose, and I'm going to keep on cutting the check for my seats, like the one thing that I and I think most fans want are guys that are committed to the team, that are yeah. that are giving that professional um, you know, they're showing that professional work ethic that, you know, in a lot of ways, I think mirrors our city that wasn't always there last year. And I mean, this will be so interesting to see how things go now that Rick Bonus has a year under his belt, knows what the tendencies are, knows what happened yesterday. And I was, I loved what Rick had to say yesterday yeah. uh, because yeah. he did not shy away from anything that happened last year. He almost highlighted it and said the job on him as head coach is to avoid those sort of things happening again and never mind what had happened in previous seasons. So, you know, continue to instill that work ethic. And I think having those new guys around the club is also a real positive that you can actually get there. Scott, you've covered this team for a long time. Remo and I were talking about it right off the bat today, and I know this is just one session of the first day of training camp, (laughs) but it's the first one ever that hasn't had Blake Wheeler around. Um, Yeah. What do you think the effect of the Wheeler buyout and Wheeler's absence will be? Not necessarily on the ice, because again, we'll see different line matchups and we'll see how that sort of develops through. But um, in the identity of the uh, of the club, um, and did you maybe see some of that already with the likes of Morrissey and Shifley being the first guys out leading that skate afterwards as... Um, maybe filling some of that leadership vacuum, if you will, that's left by uh, 26's buyout. Yeah, you know, it's interesting, right? Because, I mean, you know, when you go to like a family, like kind of whatever, and there's always that kind of one family member, you're like, uh, if they don't show up, you just kind of feel more that you can kind of, you know, you don't have to kind of walk on eggshells or whatever. So it's always, <laughs> nice, when, it's always nice when they don't show up. I just, you know, I, I wonder if there's a little bit of that to some of these players in this dressing room. Um, I do wonder if there's some of these players in this dressing room that, that know that, you know, there is legitimate opportunity for them in the top six now because of, you know, they're not going to staple Blake Wheeler to Mark Shifley or, you know, somebody on the second line and, and, and play him maybe out of position. Like, you know, that's more of a theory that, than anything. But I, I do wonder... And we, we've talked about this, and I know, you know, Connor Hellbuck, you, you'll play the clips later, he talked a lot about rumors, except when he was asked to, you know, set the record straight, he didn't really set the record straight. So, you know, you take what you want from that. But, you know, we, we've heard and, 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 and talked about this dressing room and, you know, how it maybe it's been fractured at times or, you know, ruffled feathers or all, all the, you know, the different things that we've talked about. I, I think we, we need more time to kind of see kind of how this plays out. But but I, I do think there's more opportunity now for the, I don't want to call it the little guy, because I think that's probably, you know, disrespectful. Or whatever. But I think there's more opportunity now for some of these players that have been here a long time, the Ehlers, the Connors, you know, the guys like that, to have an elevated role in this leadership group and be a little more, I don't know, vocal or whatever you want to call it, right? Because right behind Mark Shifley and right behind – Josh Morrissey today was also Kyle Connor in that bag skate and they were putting in the work to do that. Right. And so I'm not saying that, 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 that you know, it's just that everything's changed around here because it's going to take time to figure that out. We thought last preseason and, and, and exhibition and all that, 
and even the first half of the year, this team was completely kind of, you know, maybe transformed from where they were the previous year, uh, just under a new head coach, and he had changed everything. But as time would tell, eventually, some things hadn't changed, and out, and you know, ended up being the downfall of this team. So, but you know, to me, I don't know. Maybe I, it's just how I feel about the situation, or just the fact that you know we're, we're not going to hear Blake Wheeler talk about we haven't won anything yet or whatever. Like I. I just wonder if there's just a, just a tad more excitement around here than there would be because there isn't somebody here really trying to keep it. I don't know how would you call it. Maybe you know trying to temper expectations or whatever. I think there's just that genuine, a little more genuine sense. Again, it's gonna it's gonna come more with the, you know with guys that we talk to and all that. But but I, I, I think with there's more opportunity for guys and you know, I just I do wonder going back to my original kind of analogy there. I, I, I do wonder if there's just uh, you know, a little sunnier sky is, let's say, little, right now heading into this training camp. That's all. A little, uh, a, a little more, uh, a little more oxygen in the room for uh, some of these uh, these guys. And yeah. listen, I, I will say this. And you mentioned, you know, those other players feel like, oh, they're going to have that opportunity. Well, there is going to be lots of opportunity, but someone's going to need to go and prove it. Because say what you want yeah. about Blake, and I keep coming back to that. I mean. Yeah, were there probably internal issues that you know that yeah. you know uh, you know probably hampered the club in some ways and you know maybe ticked some people off, whether it be internally or externally. The bottom line is that this guy, for a long, long time, was one of the key offensive cogs, and even last year, as he kind of certainly plays the final few holes, if you will, uh, on the back nine of his career. Yeah. I mean, still put up 55 points, still was a productive player, um, and they are going to need that production. So it will be time yep. for guys to step up. Scotty, uh, listen, obviously we know who the headliners were today in 55 and 37, um, but as far as when you were watching, we'll just go on the first session because I know everything's going on right now while you're doing yep. this. Um, kind of a neat mix of younger players, Colby Barlow, Chaz Lucius, Elias Salmonson. I was really interested to see Elias playing with Josh Morrissey. Um um, but uh, you know, just what did you think overall of it? Were there any players that uh, you know maybe caught your eye a little bit, and you're looking forward to seeing how they can continue to assert themselves? Yeah, I mean, it's interesting. I mean, you look at you know somebody like Salomonson, as you're talking about there. Um, you know, the fact that him and you know Josh Morrissey was once taken under the wing by a, a certain Dustin Bufflin, and and now we have Josh Morrissey kind of taking, which potentially could be his future, um, uh, you know, defensive partner. Um, kind of under his wing and that sort of thing. So that, that's an interesting, that was interesting just to watch. And the fact that they had them paired two together this morning, you know, that that's, I think that's obviously, um, you know, something that the team has obviously gone out of its way to to, to do and, and let him kind of learn and play off Josh Morrissey and that sort of thing. So that, that that's certainly an interesting thing. I, I thought Rasmus Kapari um, looked pretty good. He's big, he's quick. Um, and I think there's a guy who was like, man, it's nice to just have a new rink to play on, a new, you know, a fresh, uh, you know, kind of a change of scenery and that sort of thing. So I thought he looked good. Buck Bartolo looked, you know, I, I thought he looked good. I imagine, um, he, you know, the fact that they've signed this this contract now is something that uh, he was probably happy to get that out of the way as well. Um, but yeah, you know, the first skate, you know, yeah, I thought there was, you know, just some, Chaz Lucius looked good too. Um, you know, I'm interested to see kind of him and how he kind of approaches this training camp. And there was a few big hits, and Logan Stanley was one who threw a, a big hit on Ashton Sautner um, earlier on in one of the drills and got a few stick taps on his shin pads when he went back to, to get back into the it's line. It's funny you bring that you up, know, Scott. Just, well, just, just quickly yeah. on Stanley, because uh, I was watching that, and you know, to be perfectly honest, that's something that we haven't seen enough from from Logan Stanley. And if he can do that... right on a consistent like there literally is nothing that he could do more to help his plot in trying to get a spot on this team and get playing time at some point then then exert himself physically and again it was sort of a weird one-on-one -on -one drill there's a lot more to it that's happening in five on five play but just sure. the willingness to go and do that like i don't know i don't know we maybe can't take too much of it but i did take notice of that i'm glad you brought it up and it did seem like well, and I, maybe this guy's finally figured out like what the hell he has to do if he wants to be a right? National Hockey League and be in the mix here in Winnipeg. 
Well, and, and I think it's, you know, the fact that that and the fact that his teammates actually acknowledged it, right? And so, like, you know, obviously big hits in training camp, you don't always want you're in that development camp in Toronto where the one guy yeah. knocked him out, right? So, I mean, it's not something you want to see, but to play on this, you know, on this blue line, you're six seven. You're like 245 pounds or whatever he is. Use the body. I mean, you, know, you were gifted with a you know a massive size, right? Um, and you know, obviously, we've seen very few of these kind of guys in the NHL um, that have kind of maybe succeeded at that position, being that size. But but they need to, the ones that have use the snarl. They, they they have a little bit of that. They use the size to their advantage. They they, they hit guys and. And they make it so you don't want to go into the corner with that guy. But, you know, I, I don't think Logan Stanley's ever really made it such that a player doesn't want to go into the corner. They, you know, I think for a lot of players, if it's going Logan Stanley way, they're sort of happy about it. So, you know, well, again, we're going to see how training camp goes. Logan's probably going to get a few of these these exhibition games too. Um, but, yeah, I mean, you're right. And, and, and I think it was one of the more – noticeable things at least noticeable clips um if we're you know remembering them of the of the first skate this morning is that logan stanley used his body and you know it's it's almost comical right because that's what he should be doing but and, and, and it just shouldn't be something that we're we're even talking about because that should be part of his game but it hasn't been and i think part of the reason why he you know lost his job to dylan samberg other than you know just defensive being able to play defense was the fact that he just hasn't really kind of used his size to his advantage. So, so yeah, we're going to see. We're going to see going forward. And, uh, yeah, it, it's going to be interesting uh, the next few days and next few weeks because if you look at this rosters right now, and obviously there's 56 guys right now in camp here, but, you know, the lines and, and, and that, that Rick Bonus gave us yesterday um, very much showed that um, this team is basically set, I think, at this point. And, you know, the, the real competition is at that 13th sport spot and who are the two defensemen that are going to not have to be put on waivers, um, right? Because one of those guys is probably going on um, unless they, you know, make a trade or something like that. So, so I, you know, there's going to be a lot of competition in terms of who's that 2C, that sort of thing. But, but I think, you know, the, the biggest spot and the biggest fights on this team are who are going to be the guys in the press box. And that's an interesting thing to say about this Jets team because, you know, even going back to last year, that wasn't the case, and 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 that sort of thing. So I think there's going to be a lot of focus and emphasis early on this team, kind of really starting to gel with what they already know they have, and then let the you know the the guys on the bubble kind of figure out who's going to be no, that 13th forward and that seventh and eighth yeah, defense. Yeah, no doubt, no doubt about that. And uh, I mean, listen, there's big questions as to the production of Wheeler and Pierre Luc Dubois. Who's going to be picking up the mm-hmm. slack? Who's going to be there? The one thing I don't think there's any question about is this team. 1 to 12 and certainly 7 to 12 much much deeper and many more options for oh, yeah. the coaching staff to uh, to put out a team that I think you can roll four lines a lot more. Scott, great stuff today. We will see you down there back at the rink tomorrow and on Saturday. Thanks for doing this and uh, enjoy the rest of the day as training camp day 1 continues. Yeah, appreciate it, Huss. Thanks, man. Good stuff. There is Scotty Billick. All right, Brandon Rewicki's coming up in yeah. just a minute. Folks, if you're looking for great prices on natural and organic supplements, beauty products, and groceries, you need to get on down to one of six Vita Health Fresh Market stores or online at myvita.ca. Um, lots going on as you get back to school. And if you've been gearing up for, uh, you know, the change that's going on, you got to keep your energy up. And you can do that with Health First B12 Supreme. B12 is involved in so many functions of our bodies, like metabolizing carbs, fats, and proteins, which are converted into energy. Health First B12 Supreme is on sale all month at Vita Health, a great local company, family-owned and operated since 1936, with Winnipeg's largest assortment of local products too. Vita Health Fresh Market, empowering people to lead healthy lives, six Winnipeg locations, and online at their fully shoppable website with local delivery options at myvita.ca. Uh, well, the fencing side of Wallace and Wallace is uh, always busy through the summer, both residential, commercial, and tons of temporary gigs. 
Um, but you might not know that they're also the leaders in overhead doors. And your overhead garage door had a lot of ups and downs this summer, working hard to get you to and from, all that great stuff you did with the family this summer. But it's about to work a whole lot harder now because winter puts way more stress on your garage door. The right time to prevent downtime this winter is now. Give Wallace & Wallace a call to book your inspection and maintenance service call today for residential and commercial overhead door sales and service. There's only one name or two you need to know. It's Wallace & Wallace. Give them a shout today at 204-452-2700. How is the closet looking, fellas? It was sort of the first day back to school vibe today down at the rink. If you need to uh, maybe upgrade that menswear game as we head into October and November, and I mean, hard to believe the holidays just around the corner as well, you need to get on down to F Apparel. Custom suits beginning at 400 bucks, along with chinos, golf pants, custom shirts, both tucked and untucked styles, and an incredible selection of menswear accessories. And if you are in a wedding party or having your own wedding, make sure to talk to Andrew and his staff about getting the fellas done up with their suits from F Apparel. You'll all get a 15% discount on the suits and you won't be returning that sucker the Monday after the big weekend. You'll be wearing it and looking good many times after the big day. F Apparel, make an appointment or check them out online at fephapparel.com and pop down and see them downtown Winnipeg at 190 Smith Street. Just before we bring in Rewiki, shout out to the Nick and Nikki DQ group. Good blizzard days the last few days with this gorgeous weather. Uh, and the summer blizzard flavors are still there and available for you at any of the four locations, along with those great stack burgers they're serving up. DQ Northgate, DQ Polo Park, DQ St. Anne's, and DQ Niverville. And speaking of Niverville, Nick and Nikki have just opened up the new Pita Pit out in Niverville. Health, healthy, fast, delicious, and quick. It's all there for you at the new Pita Pit in Niverville. And if you do need catering, Pita Pit does a hell of a job on that. You can hit them up on X at Pita Pit Niverville. All right. Jets training camp day one wouldn't be complete without a visit from our guy, the host of Skates and Plates, who will now have some new topics to discuss, probably. Brandon Rewicki joins us now. Rue, what's up, my man? How are you? I'm doing good. Hockey season's here. How could it not be good? It is. It is. It was a uh, it was really interesting being down there. Like Part of it was just sort of, yeah, we're right back at the rink. Here we go again. Um. The other thing I just couldn't get over for the first five or ten minutes was just sort of looking, all right. You know, you know, Pierre-Luc Dubois was gone. We got a chance to see Gabe Villard. He was a lot taller than I kind of remembered or expected. Um, but no Blake Wheeler. And no Blake Wheeler for the first time since the Winnipeg Jets 2.0 became a thing. And um, it was just sort of interesting to note that and will be very, very... Uh, I'm, I'm keen to see how the effects of that kind of seep into the team off the edge because i mean let's just call it what it is they were the top two dogs in that locker room for the last you know basically since dustin bufflin stepped away right and this is an opportunity potentially for for mark shifley to in a sense turn over a new leaf and you know t- <laughs> kind of show the guy that everybody thinks he can be um so it, it it's not quite i i can't Fully jump into this is a new era of Winnipeg Jets hockey hus because we'll we'll see what happens at the trade deadline and then maybe we can maybe make a more definitive statement on that. Um, well, but vibes are good. I, vibes I are good know. right now. I like that part of it. Yeah, I, I, listen. I don't know whether we're going to need to wait till the trade deadline, dude. I mean, I, I really think that if you look at any team in the National Hockey League, the Jets might be the most interesting team heading into the first 25 to 30 games because I think the range of possibilities for what could happen are about as wide as they are for any team in the league. And the consequences of those those different paths, I, I think, have massive implications on what happens for the rest of the season and we get towards that, that, that trade deadline. Um, and listen, Mark Scheifele's front and center along with Connor Hellebuck, and no surprise that it was hilarious. Gabe Lardy comes over in this new trade. He's just sitting over in the corner. No one's talking to him. Just probably a 10-minute one-on-one with Jacob Stoller. Josh Morrissey's at the back because, hey, everybody wanted to hear 
from Mark and from Connor. And we'll hear from Connor in a little bit. We've got the clips. We're just cutting those up as we do this. But I'll say this, and I've been critical of Shifley in the past. I mean, I, I think justifiably so. But I'm impressed with what he, the way he handled himself today, and maybe most importantly, just the way that he looked out on the ice, um, you know, playing with Kyle Connor and Gabriel, Gabriel Velarde, and then he and Josh Morrissey leading that bag skate afterwards. I mean, I think, listen, is he the captain? No. Does he have an uncertain future? Yes. But he has as much to gain as anybody from doing some of the things that, frankly, he's been criticized before uh, about improving on that. Certainly, it will benefit the team. But I think it benefits him in a number of ways to, I uh, listen, potentially maybe rehabbing, uh, a, you know, a, a reputation that might be tarnished a little bit by the way this the last two seasons have ended. Certainly, might change the way the organization feels about potentially offering a contract extension. Um, but no matter what, a strong season from him, without you know some of the noise around it, regardless of whether it's in Winnipeg or elsewhere, certainly helps him next off season and uh, the bottom line is as long as he's the number one center for this team he's too damn important to have it not go well and um he'll always be one of the most important players and maybe the biggest challenge of rick bonus um and it's a good thing he's got all that experience because i think he might need all of it this year yeah. well i mean whatever he said to morrissey last year why would you just whisper that to shifley and I, I, maybe the jets will be just fine but i i mean look letter or not Anybody that's played on a team at any level, I think really understands that, you know, the best players on your team really do ultimately determine how a season goes. And when your best players are your hardest workers, the most attuned to detail, intense, all those little intangibles, the rest of the team really doesn't have much of an opportunity but to follow those exact same things. I think in a way that's why Boston's been so good for so long and it's why it's kind of interesting to see how they'll do this year because when when Bergeron and, and Chara are, you know, doing all the little things, oh, well, the trickle down for the rest of the roster I think is pretty evident to see. So, yeah, I, I mean, look, I, I think we're going to get the best of Shifley this year. I think it's also human nature that, you know, when you know that you have one last chance at a big payday, you're going to do all the things right. All right? Like, like we would all be in that exact same situation, making sure that, you know, I got to, I got to find a way to be 110% every single day here, because this opportunity is only going to come around one more time in my career. So, uh, you know, there's a lot of questions and concerns about the jets going into this year. Kind of surprisingly for me, I, I don't think Shifley's one of them. Like I, I, I think, I think the guy that we saw last year is, is probably what we're going to get this year. Uh, it just comes down to how the rest of the team does as to whether or not he's going to be around for the long haul. That's it's not it's not a Shifley thing per se. Um, it's just going to be how the team as a whole performs around him. Well, okay, I, I, I hope you're not entirely right with that because as much as I mean, listen, the guy scored 42 goals and was very very productive scoring. Certainly, the assists were down. His line didn't have that same sort of success. The team wasn't winning in the second half of the season when some of the same old things were creeping out. And listen, it started a big rift between he and the head coach of this hockey club to the point when I mean, we're talking about him as a number one center. He wasn't playing center for this hockey club in the playoffs last year, Brandon. So I would say that there is some proving it to be done. Like, listen, if we're just talking about what he does offensively, I mean, for sure. I mean, he'll get a lot of opportunities to do it. And he will, certainly, and whether it's through the power play or playing with those guys, I mean, he'll be a productive player. But to me, it's so many of the the, the questions about Mark um, are everything other than that. Um, but as they say, put a good foot forward today. Um, certainly, I think, showed some things in that skate this morning, as well as with the bag skate afterwards, that I think even his biggest critics will, uh, will welcome. Um, and anyways, a good first day. Um, yeah. I mean, I, I, we, when, I, when I say that, though, I, I ultimately what I'm kind of getting at, Huss, is that, like, is he 30 right now? 29, 30? Yeah. Like, he's what he is. Like, we know we know what kind of a player he is. That, like, I, I, I don't have concerns because yeah. it's like the guy that we've seen for the last three years is probably the guy we're going to get this year. He'll be around a point a game. He'll score a ton. I would imagine, too, the assists go up this year. 
and he's going to be below average defensively. Hopefully just below average defensively. <laughs> Hopefully not what we saw a couple years back, right? Like there's there's just not a lot. Like he is what he is at this point. I don't anticipate him becoming an above average defensive player just because he's got a big contract on tap this offseason. No, listen, that's fair. Um, and listen, prove us wrong, I guess, is the, uh, <laughs> is, the uh, is the story on all of that. Speaking of that line, though, um, it's Shifley and Connor who together have had some of the biggest defensive issues. And the newcomer, Gabriel Velarde, is on that right wing. And Velarde's a bit of a sniper himself. I mean, he was 23 goals, 18 assists last year in his 60-odd games that he played. Um, a great opportunity for Velarde to be playing with a couple of world-class offensive players. But what do you think about the fit of him there and maybe what will be on his plate from a 200-foot um, sense considering the guys that he's playing that will, uh, let's just say, will never be up for any Selkie nominations, I don't think. Yeah, it's kind of funny that they, they put the youngster on the line to be the defensive conscience of the trio. But but that's that's probably what it is. Like, he's got the shot for sure. But, I mean, he showed down the stretch for L.A. that out there on the wing, he was a pretty pretty massive defensive presence for the Kings. So, I, I, I don't mind it, Huss. I mean, personally, I would have... I, I would have liked to have tried Velarde down the middle as opposed to, to Cole Perfetti. Um, I, I just think long-term he is a much more viable fit there than Perfetti at the NHL level. Having said that, though, I, I love everything about the way the Jets are going about handling that, that second-line center role that you know they're, they're giving Perfetti every chance and every opportunity to take that and run with it. Yeah, I, I, I get why be he's getting the first shot. I mean, yeah. just best-case scenario for the Winnipeg Jets – Cole Perfetti gets this opportunity, makes the most of it, shows that he can do it, and he's the guy. And then you've got so many other options, especially because we're still not talking about a certainty of the future of Mark Shifley. And if that's the case, you know, you've got another guy that could move in at center. Um, and again, you've got a backup plan if things don't go well with Cole in that spot. And obviously there's a lot that he's going to need to prove to the coaching staff that he's ready for to be a top six player in the middle with the different responsibilities that come with that spot as opposed to where he's been on the wing the last couple of years. Yeah, and and I, I think the Jets, again, are giving him every opportunity to do that because not too many second-line centers in the NHL house would have the security blanket of a Nikolai Ehlers who can carry his own line and then Nidu Niederreiter who's like the pro's pro, like the, the guy that every every team wants somewhere, you know, in their, in their middle six, and as a second liner, you're feeling pretty damn great about that. So, I mean, we're going to find out if he's ready for it. <laughs> I, like, I, don't, I don't think it'll be an excuse to the team not giving him the chance to do so. I, yeah, I, I just feel like his game's better suited to the wing. And I, I mean, for, for a kid that struggled to avoid injury in his first two seasons, his first season and a half in the NHL, I wonder if center is maybe not the best route to have him play 65 70 games this year but i would i will happily eat crow here huss if if perfetti comes out of the gate and you know is on a 70 point pace and that second line is lighting up the opposition it's it's what the jets should be doing like they should be and this is something they need to do a better job of up and down their roster to be honest is giving some of their younger guys elevated opportunities and then seeing what they have because I mean, there's a big hole right now on the roster, but you're right. There might be an even bigger hole by, by the start of next season. So let's get a little proactive here. And we've got some youngsters. Like, be the team that gives young guys a chance up and down the lineup. And that, that, that I think, could be pretty impactful in a macro sense down the road. Yeah, well, and, and just, I mean, when we're talking about the future of the center ice position, I mean, with the departure of Dubois and the uncertainty about where Shifley's at, I think we've learned a few things. I mean, they are certainly planning and looking ahead to exactly that fork in the road. Perfetti's getting his first opportunity to be, you know, to play center this year right out of the gate. And I don't think it was a surprise that at the prospects camp, they made a point of getting Brad Lambert's significant time at center, Chaz Lucius as well, um, because they do need to see who their best candidates are moving forward to develop in. And I mean, every single one of those guys has a first round pedigree. Um, you know, some of them will turn out to be better picks than you could have imagined. And some might not meet, meet what you thought you were going to, but you do have to find out one way or the other uh, about all of that. Um, speaking of, you know, giving a chance to show what they can do. Maybe the most interesting thing I found today in the early skate 
was when I looked to see who Josh Morrissey was paired up with was Elias Salmonson. Um, I think we all expect that Elias is going to you know, head back to Sweden, but I'll tell you what, Brandon, I mean, just thinking big picture and into next year, a young man, right shot, acquitted himself so well in Sweden. Um, I really hope we see a little bit of exhibition action with uh, Elias getting a chance to roll with Josh because speaking of best case scenarios for the club moving ahead going forward, it's this young man turning into a 20-minute plus defenseman every day. And, man, if you could do that along with Josh Morrissey, I think the future would be really bright for that top pairing. Yeah, right right shot defensemen are like lefties in baseball, man. Like when you... If you can unearth one, you're you're in a pretty good spot. I was actually joking with my neighbor about this. Like, we should tie my little one's right arm behind his back, and he's only throwing lefties, so we can maybe cash in on that a little. Well, that's down the road, though. Um, but I, I've always loved that the Jets have done this. Like, this goes back to, you know, they, they would put a young guy with buff, too, back in the day, right? I, 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 think, I think the organization does a good job here, especially knowing, like, I mean, Morrissey, DeMello, they can throw them out there whenever, and, and they, they played with each other enough that, you know, there's not – there's not really a need to have them suit up in, in training camp and exhibition too much together. But, I mean, it's a great opportunity for Salmonson. There's no doubt about that. He's, yeah, he's kind of risen up the ranks pretty quickly. Like, from being a semi-obscure second-round pick to somebody that's got legit potential, I think, to be, uh, you know, a, a top-four contributor, at least at the NHL level. I mean, it's massive. And so, let him roll with the kid. Be a sponge, right? Like, just staple him beside him for the rest of camp and yeah i, I agree like give give him a preseason game or two beside him and you never know what happens there and, and wherever he ends up playing this year that that's definitely a guy kind of in the mold of like chipperkov in a sense where like keep an eye on him because he might be he might be a pretty big piece in winnipeg a lot sooner than a lot of us might have thought well well i mean it's funny i mean i i think i've told this story before on the show i'm not sure whether to you but uh, we had a bit of a moose reunion um, last year, sort of later on in the season. And, um, you know, I was talking to Mike Keane, but I sat down with Jimmy Roy for a while. And we watched a period, and we were just, you know, talking about everything. We got into um, that draft class, um, last year's draft class. And, you know, unprompted, uh, it wasn't like I was digging for it. I mean, we sort of got into it, and he started saying just how exciting – and we weren't just talking about, you know, about Brad Lambert um, and about the uh, and about like the guys that were picked at the top. And we were talking about Dom DiVincentis. We were talking about Danny Zilkin. But the guy that you could just tell the excitement was far beyond, I think, what they thought they'd be dealing with was with Elias Salmonson. And he, listen, he's been playing big minutes in the top league as an 18, now 19-year-old defenseman. And, I mean, I'm assuming that he will be back there. Like, I just don't think there's any way to make the numbers work if all of a sudden he barged his way into uh, the conversation. But, listen, I mean, again, stranger things have happened. But, man, another year playing at that top level for one of the best teams with big minutes, big responsibility... I mean, I think they're testing him right now to see how close he is to be ready to doing exactly that with probably the expectation. And, I mean, they're going to make decisions based on that. I mean, you've got DeMello's expiring contract, Brendan Dillon's. I mean, the plan is eventually to turn that over to younger to younger players. It's just about them being ready. And, and by the way, if Salomonson does turn out to be the player that I think they believe that they have, and Brad Lambert hits, that Andrew Kopp trade might go down, Brandon, as, you know, one of the truly, I mean, Chevy takes a lot of heat for a lot of things. Some will say fairly, some will say very unfairly. I mean, we are staring at one of the great trade deadline deals in a long time. If Brad Lambert becomes a regular and Elias Salmonson becomes a regular and Mar Morgan Barron already is a regular for this club. Might be his best trade, in all honesty. <laughs> like, I mean, to take... And and Cobb's great, but I mean, like a, a middle six tweener to take that and and turn it into, I mean, the the value that you're getting there. But a first, he didn't a even second, resign all with them. Yeah, yeah, like it's just six one, weeks of Andrew Cobb. Like I maybe just throw it in that. Oh, by the way, can we just throw in that conference final sweetener? Turn that in from a second into a like if that's okay with you, <laughs> right? Like I just throw it in there. It's not a big deal. I, I mean, it it was it was masterful at the time. 
And it's just getting better and better here. And then, you know, even when Lambert was picked, it was like, wow, we might get a top six winger out of this. Now he's playing down the middle and he was, just, you know, like a point and a half per game in the dub down the middle there. So it's like, oh, like it seems like it keeps getting better and better the more and more time passes with that trade. Um, yeah, that was a home run. Uh, that was definitely a home run for Chevy there. And yeah, I, I, I think the Jets organization has every right to be as high on Salmonson as, as they are right now. It, it, it looks to be like, at the very least, they got an NHL player out of the second round there. How high the ceiling is, we'll see. But yeah, you might not want to put a limit on the kid because if you're a teenager playing in, whether it's Sweden, Finland, overseas there, you're playing 20 plus minutes a night. Yeah, I think he's going to be just fine in a couple of years. Um, interesting. Uh, Colby Barlow gets his ELC today. So uh, add another contract to the board for the Winnipeg Jets. And he, <laughs> you know, it is funny, Brandon. We talk about all these young players and how, you know, they're just kids when they get picked up. I'm pretty sure that he was fully shaved before one of the prospects games in Penticton and then had a full beard again by the third period. I mean, he looks like a man. He's big. He's got the size. He certainly has the shot. Now he's got the contract. Um, I mean, I think we all expect him to go back and be the captain of the Owen Sound attack again. But but as far as physical maturity and maybe ready to play earlier than some others that are drafted in a similar position, he's a guy I think we look at when we're seeing what happens in the training camp and the exhibition games this year, not for this season with the big club, but as we mentioned, next year could be a pivotal change of the guard with a number of young players coming in and uh well he's got his contract right now and i know he's going to be really trying to prove that he is on the cusp on the doorstep right now of making that move to the nhl yeah it's it's i mean by 20 he's going to be an nhl player and i i i, st- I still feel like that selection's being underrated a decent amount like by the scouting community by the rest of the nhl it's almost like it's like yeah he's going to be a 30 30 player in the nhl well that's pretty damn good to get in the middle of the first round, regardless of how stacked that draft might be, I mean, I, I, I feel I felt confident at the time, and I as, as more and more time passes, uh, that you know my strength in this doesn't waver at all. But I feel like the Jets drafted Tyler Toffoli 2.0, and that's the kind of guy that I think he's going to be for the club, and that's that's a pretty damn good outcome, uh, pretty much anywhere in the first round, but especially at you know 17, 18, yeah, he's he's just going to be he's going to be a stud for this team for a long, long time. Brandon Ruwicki's with us. Make sure you check out Skates and Plates wherever you get your favorite podcast content. And make sure you're subscribing to Winnipeg Sports Talk 2 while you're there, especially if you just found us on YouTube. Uh, I, I didn't think we'd be talking about this, but I'm just going to bring this up right now. It has just been put out. We're moving away from hockey for a minute. The Bombers have just announced that next Friday's game against the Argos is also sold out making it three straight sellouts. Uh, first off, what a perfect environment it'll be for a Grey Cup rematch and, of course, Andrew Harris's return. But, Brandon, I have to admit, we're talking about hockey, and I saw this, and I know the Bombers are on a bye week right now. But at a certain point, sometimes you do just have to step back and think about where this team and this organization was six, seven, eight years ago. And to think that not only is this team once again battling and, you know, potentially going to be playing at home for a chance to go to the Great Cup, but what they have done in the stands outside, I mean, the everything, like the football product has been unmatched over the course of this period of time. But holy smokes, man, three straight sellouts in the Canadian Football League. These are uh, These are special times for the blue and gold. Yeah, just just soak it in, <laughs> like enjoy it right now, because as we're very well aware, as you were were keen to point out there, it can can change pretty quickly in football. So I'm going to enjoy it while we can right now. And it's funny, too, because um, in, in my Twitter feed, there was like that announcement. And then whatever the hell is going on with the Chicago Bears right now. Um, oh and I've said, this, I've said this before, Hus, but you you cannot tell me that there are. 30 better run franchises in pro football right now than the Winnipeg Blue Bombers. They may not pull in as much as, as some of those teams down south, but as far as as far as fulfilling their potential and everything that goes around it, the Bombers are the cream of the crop up north, and I think they're better than probably a dozen teams in the NFL at the moment. 
Well, I, I, listen, I, I think I would maybe put it. I mean, there's a lot of NFL teams that don't really have to work very hard, that don't have to. I mean, this this management group realized early, early on the amount of work that needed to be done and got to it right away. And um, uh, listen, the uh, the benefits are being reaped right now. But um, I've been looking at that game for a long time and wondered how, you know, because often, you know, you get to the end of September into October, people sort of shy away. They have created the scarcity of the ticket. They've been getting ahead of it. They sold out that Montreal game. The Banjo Bowl was sold out. And now we got another sellout going forward. Hey, uh, very quickly, because we're going to get to Connor Hellebuck coming up in just a minute and hear about this. Uh, two NFL questions for you. Number one, Eagles are 2-0. and Haven't looked particularly impressive uh, at this point. How are you feeling about the Eagles and where they are right now with your start? Yeah, it's it, it it is odd. They haven't played Baker yet. Mayfield on Monday night next week too. The two and O Buccaneers yeah. with Baker. <laughs> Never thought I'd say I'm a little concerned about Baker and, and Tampa Bay in Week Three there, but I mean I, I think it's fine. I mean, and Kansas City's kind of going through the same thing right now. They're just like teams of that ilk are. It, it's kind of like warming up to the end of the season, right? Like the team they have right now isn't going to be the same team at the end of the year. Um, I mean, there there's big holes in Philly, man. Like. I guess ignoring the linebacker and safety position might lead to some defensive problems, and and they're finding that out the hard way right now. Um, but I mean, Jalen Carter's a problem. He's he's probably been the best rookie for sure defensively in oh the NFL. Oh my god, he's a beast. Yeah, he's. I mean, it's just crazy what what he does there, and he's going to be a, a. I mean, Warren Sapp two point probably. He's just out of this world good. Um, but the thing, I, on, it's not even Philly, man. Dallas is a major problem right now. They look. They like we. How good is Micah Parsons? Stuff? Yeah, it's it's Micah Parsons and company. That defense, like that's, it's early, but that that might be an all time unit they've got going on over there. Well, we'll see what happens as the season rolls along. But I like I just don't know how you deal with Micah Parsons. He's bigger and faster and stronger than everybody else on the planet right now, and that's in a league full of athletic freaks. So I, like, what do you do? I don't know. I'm, I'm a little worried that the Cowboys might actually be legit this year. Uh, I'm with you. Uh, any uh, lead on this game tonight? Um, it's going to be a long, long night for Danny Dimes and the Giants going into Santa Clara to take on the uh, the Niners. Ten and a half point number. Danny Nichols. It's not Danny Dimes right now. You got. He's got to be a little better to, to, to earn that. Um, my my take on the game is that it will be PVR'd and will be fast forwarded through much of the game. It's <laughs> it's not going to be a beauty. Um, that's a big number though. And Thursday nighters are always weird. It's one of those games where it's like it doesn't make sense, but I might take the Giants against the spread. Maybe like a backdoor cover, a la Sean McVay last week, something Dude, like that. Don't even, <laughs> don't even get going. Although I said this on the lock shop, and for people wondering what we're talking about, the Niners um, were like seven and a half point favorites, seven seven and a half point favorites against the Rams, uh, seven and a half point eight. Last play of the game, the Rams are down ten points. And McVeigh sends out his field goal kicker to lose by seven instead of lose by 10. Now, I, of course, was absolutely irate because I had a Niners ticket at minus seven and a half. Thank God for the partner parlay that cashed. We got it to six and a half. So we won on that one. However, I've been thinking about this all week. And as much as I was pissed off that I took an L because of it, I actually kind of respect it. You think about this, if you're already going to lose, you know the game is basically over, and you have a head co- you as a head coach have the opportunity on the final play of the game to cover the spread, to reward your fans and the people that backed you that believed with their you. hard-earned money. I kind of respect it. I mean, does it matter at all in the standings and that's supposed to all they're cared? No. But I mean, that stuff happens in college football all the time. They know how much those boosters have tied up in some of those wagers. So uh, you know what? I hated it when it happened, but honestly, I think more more coaches should be like, no, you know what? If we have the chance to at least cover for our fans, yeah. let's do it. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. I, I mean, it's just it's so egregious. You have to laugh. I, I, like at some point, it's like, I mean, I, I wonder if they got like the buzz from upstairs, like, hey, Sean, you know, oh, line we, seven and a half, right? Yeah, we can cover here. I got a I got a cousin <laughs> that put a little bit on. Like maybe we can help you help me. Uh, people helping people. I, 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 why else would you do that? Right? Like that has to be it. Doesn't have to be, you know, super nefarious or anything like that, but it's 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 funny. You have to you have to laugh or you'll cry, right? 
No doubt about it. Dude, uh, enjoy this one tonight, and uh, maybe we'll catch you on the weekend, and uh, certainly we'll talk to you next week right here on WST. Thanks for doing this. Yeah, no worries. Sounds good. Talk to you right soon. On. Right on. There's Brandon Wiki Skates and Plates, uh, wherever you get your favorite pods. Uh, oh, we got a new member I missed. Thank you very much for that. And shout out to Tico and Apolli. Tico and Apolli with an epic super chat. And thank you very much for the generous drop there, Ticona. Uh, oh, the new member was Ticona Polly. He's back. I'm back, biatches. After eight months of Google Pay BS, I'm good to go. And Huss, it's not Villy, it's VL. Bauer lumps in camp, LOL. And then drops, let's go blue. Yes, okay. That goes back to, we were talking about Dennis Vial, the uh, new um, tougher player that the Jets signed from the Sharks organization. I think he had like 150 minutes with Bakersfield. Or no, with the Barracuda, excuse me, which is, as we all know, a very high number for players, uh, you know, playing in 2023, 2024. Um, but he said, oh, I'm looking forward to the bauer Villy scrap and I'm like Yeesh, I don't like I don't like handle his chances <laughs> in that battle with his boy Bauer um but yeah I'm not sure whether we'll see those guys go at it in camp or whether that's something that they uh show what they can do in the exhibition season but I would have a feeling that at some point before cuts are made we will see the gloves of both Bauer and VL on the ice at some point T. Paul you're the man hey speaking of uh T. Paul working on uh a wheelchair option for uh, for T. Kona for our Winnipeg Jets four-game pack. Uh, I know there's a lot of people that maybe hadn't been around lately. Uh, we've got a pack. There's been amazing response um, for it. We picked four of the best games, and uh, we got the best section around, section 316 in the corner. Now, because of how many people jumped on seats right away, we opened up a couple rows across the aisle in 317. We will continue to do so. But if you haven't already, hit the link at winnipegsportstalk.com. For you podcast listeners, it'll take you right there. If you're with us on YouTube, just go into the description of the video, and there's a link right there. L.A. Kings return to Dubois on October 17th. McDavid and the Oilers on a Thursday at the end of November. Saturday night, Toronto Maple Leafs Hockey Night in Canada in January. And then a big Thursday night game against the Calgary Flames. Uh, it's 375 for the four tickets, taxes in for all games. You'll get your choice of a beer, drink, soda, or pop at all four games. That's going to be done through the Jets app. And we've got a little, uh, we'll have a little WST uh, meet and greet before every game. We've got early access to the section, the bar right outside our stuff. So anyways, if you're thinking about you were wanting to do a smaller package, I don't think he could do better than the WST four pack. Four awesome games. Uh, we've got a great crew already. Would love to see you there. Click on those links and uh, and sign up now uh, as we've uh, been going through a lot of seats so far. And I'm not sure how many more we're going to be able to grab in those sections. All right. Uh, we will hear from Connor Hellebuck in just a minute. Uh, but again, congrats to the Bombers on a third straight sellout. What an amazing story. Uh, that team is off the field and uh, hopefully on the field. It'll be a big night for the organization as well with the game that they do need to win right now with where BC is going up against the defending Grey Cup champions. Still tough to say that. The Toronto Argos, of course, three or two hours before the, another sold-out game. You know where to be, the Princess Auto tailgate zone just outside of IG Field. Princess Auto, proud sponsors of the Bombers and Winnipeg Sports Talk and the place where you'll find the best deals and the most unique assortment of tools and equipment around. Everything you need to complete the projects on your list or start something new is at Princess Auto. Pop by and visit them in-store, Panet Road, Portage Avenue West, or shop online 24-7, 365 at princessauto.com. Uh, shout out to Consolidated Supply as well. Speaking of big Bomber fans, I know Joe, Spicy, Buck, and the guys, Big Gene, um, have a great time at the games when they're able to get out there. Uh, but part of the challenge of doing that is just how busy they are throughout the summer. They are the irrigation specialists. Uh, they're the go-to guys for all things artificial turf, both indoor and outdoor. And, of course, golf carts and club car vehicles is the exclusive club car distributor here in Manitoba. But Consolidated Supply has some other great options for your property to think about and talk to them about. Hot tubs. And amazing outdoor kitchen options 
And uh, what you might not know is they're also the leaders in small engine parts and small engine repair. Pop by and see them. Consolidated supply. So much they've got waiting for you at their showroom. Open to the public. 1395 Niaqua Road East. Or you can find out more online at cte.ca. Um, first day of camp was great. Did get a chance to see Rasmus Kapari wearing his number 15. And Gabriel Velarde wearing his new number 13 with the Winnipeg Jets. You want to get geared up with one of the new members of the Jets? Get on down to Royal Sports. Best selection of Winnipeg Jets merchandise you'll find anywhere. Thousands of pieces of Jets merch on the rack. And, of course, we'll find out about these new jerseys on Saturday and when they're going to be worn. And then you'll be able to hook those up at Royal as well. Um, whether it's for your bomber gear needs, Jets gear, 32 teams represented in the National Football League. Royal Sports is the spot for fans, and it's for players as well. 40 years as the hockey superstore with the best selection and the most highly trained staff in town when it comes to everything you need for the upcoming hockey season. Royal Sports, 750 Pemina Highway. Give them a follow on Insta at Royal Sports Pemina for the latest merchandise drops and sale information. And hey, Shout out to Boston Pizza. I've been to a couple different BPs for Monday Night Football. Always love Monday Night Football at BP. How about Thursday Night Football along with a massive Blue Jays game tonight? Garrett Cole, Berrios going for the Jays. 6 p.m. Uh, 6 p.m. first pitch or 6.07, whatever the Yankees started is. And then an hour later, we've got that San Francisco 49ers and the New York Giants. Where better to spend your Thursday night than Boston Pizza? Sipping on ice cold schooners, chowing on world famous BP wings and those gourmet pizzas as well. And hey, if you are staying at home tonight, you can always order online at bostonpizza.com. All right, let's get Remus back in here. We're going to hear from Connor Hellebuck, who spoke today. Um, but Rima, how about that? Three straight sellouts for the Bombers. I mean, just uh, it's such a great news story. I could talk about it. Um, a lot longer, although they're off this week, so there's not much else to talk about. But huge congratulations to uh, everyone there working so hard to fill that stadium. It is a, uh, it is great for the the team, and it is just great for the Canadian Football League as well. Yeah, the Bombers have really made a great job with uh, making games like an event, uh, like a party. I think you know you want to go and see great football. Like they've scored 50 points in their last. Yeah. Or average like 49.5 in their last three home games. But aside from the game, I think you like being outside, getting a drink, uh, great, you know, local theme concessions there. Um, you know, you got what the uh, Jim Beam social pass. There's so much more uh, than just a football game. The Avs are what Princess Auto tailgate. There's so much stuff going on aside from the game. But the I think the great football that we've seen. Definitely is the exclamation point uh, on all that, or the great atmosphere is the exclamation. I don't know. Take your pick. I'm not. Good. I'm not great know. at grammar, Hus, but uh, <laughs> it's it's a great time uh, going to the game. Yeah, I mean, listen, it's a great time to be a Bomber fan. There's no doubt about that. I wonder when the last time a Canadian Football League team sold out three straight games. I bet it's a while. Uh, and uh, hey, here's to uh, here's to keeping that thing rolling. Um, and here's to selling out the West Final here in Winnipeg. Still some work to do to get that game here. And then a uh, big part of that will be maybe getting one back on the Toronto Argonauts, who we expect to be in that Grey Cup game coming up in Hamilton in November. Um, we'll talk a little bit more about tonight's games. We'll hit the cool bet lines in a minute. Um, but we started off talking about Mark Scheifele and heard uh, you know what Scheif had to say in his first visit with the media since coming back since the uh, uh, the summer. And then we heard from Connor Hellebuck. And, of course, huge scrums. We showed the pictures at the beginning of today's show. Um, but I was kind of doing the lock shop, so I have not heard this. I'm really looking forward to it. You get some live reaction right on the program right now. So, Rima, why don't we tee this up? We'll just go from top to bottom with the Hellebuck clips that you've got arranged we started off with Connor Hellebuck, who uh, said he's looking forward to camp and uh, getting going today. Hey, you know, I'm pretty excited. Had a really good summer. Um, seen a lot of familiar faces and a lot of new guys. So there, there's time to be excited here. And um, camp just started, so uh, my mind's kind of shifted to let's let's get things done. Let's go for the cup. And, you know, I'm just here to win, and that's always been my goal. And 
I don't see why this year would change anything just because of the scenario I'm in. All right, so that's the first kind of mention of the scenario he's in. And, of course, that scenario, if uh, you haven't been paying attention, is that Connor Hellebuck's an unrestricted free agent, pending unrestricted free agent at the end of this year. Um, certainly... I think the Winnipeg Jets would love to have Hellebuck's name on another contract. Pierre Lebrun reported earlier this offseason that his next contract would not be in Winnipeg, but it seems like there's maybe been an opening of the door to potentially stay. Um, obviously, there was lots of questions about the contract, uh, but um, Hellebuck just talked about some of the offseason rumors both with trades and, you know, what was reported about uh, where he's looking to play post this season. Rumors are crazy. You can't believe everything you read. Um, that being said, I know you can break down my way and make, make a fun article based on what's going on in, in this locker room. But at the end of the day, I'm just here to win a cup. And we have a good team, and I do believe that. Um, I see a lot of guys and see a lot of improvement. I see just a lot of eagerness in this room to to improve as, improve as a group and, and really give her all. So I want to be part of that. Uh, I want to be part of the, the year I have here, and, and I, that's all I can look forward to is, is what I am in now, and that's making the most out of here. Um, <laughs> a vintage Heli quote there, Reem. Uh, and, I mean, obviously, I love the fact that he, they, he's here to win. That won't change anything. Excited. Thinks they have a good team. And then you sort of hear he goes, in the, in the year I have here, realizing that there is no tomorrow if they don't get his name on a contract. Yeah, I, I mean, I took away that he believes the team can win a cup. They have a great team. You know, we love that ultimate Connor Hellebuck confidence. And there was certainly no shortage of that in this one. Remember what our training camp first one a couple of years ago? What did he say? Uh, he believes they have enough to be a dynasty, obviously. Uh, that didn't really happen, but uh, it, it, unwavered confidence here from Hellebuck. Yeah. Love it. I loved all this. This was vintage. Oh, I don't even know if you can say vintage for Connor, but this was prime Hellebuck uh, press conference, day one training camp. Loved it. Well, that's still, I mean, that's still our guy right there, um, you know, with the way that he speaks, the uh, the confidence that he does have in himself and in his team that some people will say is unfounded. Some people won't. Um but he, you know, he, there was the off-season rumors. This is this is the key bit when we talk about Hellebuck's future. Um, and here is he talking about having an open mind when it comes to the Winnipeg Jets. I got an open mind. That, that's about as clear as I could be. Is I have an open mind to everything, and I just want to. I've made that clear from day one. I've had the unique scenario of being able to have time on my side to really analyze everything and and to make sure everything is falling into place the way I want it. I, I'm going to be patient. That's uh, That was my goal from the start, well, from my exit meeting, was I'm going to be patient. So um, we'll see how everything unfolds in, in the upcoming future, but I'm here, I'm a Jet, and I'm just going to try to win a cup with this team. Well, certainly with the resume that Hellebuck's put together, um, he can afford to be patient because... Um, you know, he's won a Vesna Trophy, was a finalist again last year. There certainly is a demand for goaltenders of his caliber. Although throughout the summer, uh, it, it certainly what we heard reported by a lot of the insiders is that there maybe wasn't an appetite to sign big money goalies like, frankly, Hellebuck deserves to be. Maybe that's an opening for the Winnipeg Jets. I don't know. We'll see. But he expanded a little bit more on what having an open mind about the situation here in Win Winnipeg means. You know, I feel like if I say anything now, it could change tomorrow. Uh, it's the business side of things. I have an open mind as I'm not closing the door to anywhere. Uh, I'm going to look at anywhere that I think can win a cup. And I know this locker room can win a cup. That's been my main goal and my main focus. That's how hard I've worked all summer. It's how hard I worked all career is to win a cup. So I'm standing here now telling you I'm going to win a cup. And that is the only, I guess that's the only information that I can give you is that I'm going to try to win a cup. Holy crap, that might have been one of the all-time best <laughs> Hellebuck clips ever. I told you, man, he's on fire. This was, this was like gold from him. 
you know, uh, I mean, you can't help but love that. And I mean, I, I'm sitting here going like listening to Hellebuck say this, I'm going to win a cup. That's my only goal. I, I'm like, okay, what, what are the Jets at at Cool Bet right now? I have not been thinking about the Jets as a Stanley Cup contender at the, uh, up until this point. But honestly, sometimes all it takes is hell about getting in front of a microphone to remind everybody you got one of the best goaltenders in the world, and he'll be the first one to tell you there is a lot of talent in this room, albeit a little bit more deep, maybe not as high end, with the uh, Wheeler and particularly Dubois departures and the other guys coming in. Um Hellebuck wasn't done, though, um, because he was very clear that he's open to everything. He wants to win and feels that he can't. He will win, and certainly this team can win. Um, but again, this could go on the entire season. Hellebuck was asked if he thinks that this could be uh, a distraction. Coming up to this point, we haven't really had to worry about distractions. Um, even camp, we really don't need to worry about distractions too much because there's no... There's no real stress except get better every single day. And then at this point in my career, I can handle that stress very well. It honestly doesn't even feel like stress. I just, it's something that excites me every day. Um, so the dialogue between me and my agent is it's just going to be what it needs to be. You know, we, we, have, we still have time. We still have time. And it's, it's going to be one of those things that if it, if it drags on and it becomes a distraction, well, then we handle it then. But as of now, it's no distraction in my house. Oh, Connor Hellebuck is ready to go for this season. Um, and I'll tell you what, those sort of words, I, I mean, you know, they'll resonate differently between different areas of the fan base. I think most of all people say, listen, bring it on. We need more of that. We need more of that confidence and borderline a little bit of swagger for this team here in Winnipeg. Um, but you hope that that rubs off and that level of belief, you know, more guys feel that way. Uh, and Hellebuck was asked, you know, if he thinks that this, if this could be a big year for the Jets, especially with everything else going on around the club. I feel like you could ask that to any player at any time. Every year is, is different. Every year changes. Every year you want to prove it to each other and you want them to prove it to you. So... You know, I don't think that pertains to just me. I think that everyone in this room wants to see this team win. I mean, that's why we're all here in the, at the end of the day. But everyone wants to see each other's best, and that's what that's why guys go to opportunities. They go to those opportunities because they know they're going to succeed, and they know the guys around them are going to help them succeed and succeed themselves. So, I mean, that's what's exciting about this game. You never know what you're going to get day by day, and you just can give your all and, and really hope that you're helping everyone else. But it's just Here's Connor Hellebuck. Now, a couple more from Helly before we're done. And there's one more on the contract. And this is a great question. Shout out to whichever one of the Winnipeg media asked them this. Um, but Connor responds here to the question of if there's something that he needs to see from Winnipeg before considering re-signing with the Jets. You're, you're asking that like I've closed the door on Winnipeg. I love it here. I love the fans here. I, I love the city. Uh, it's very outdoorsman, and that's what I am. That being said, I don't want to come and say to you guys something, and then tomorrow it changes and it'd be different. So uh, I'm just going to leave it as I'm going to win a cup, and wherever I can win a cup, I think, is where I want to be. I don't think this locker room is bad at all. I think... We have a lot of skill and a great team. And I'm excited to be part of that, and I'm excited to move forward with that. I know a lot of guys have worked hard all summer, and this is day one of camp. As uh, camp dwindles down, you're going to see some some improvement. You're going to see some guys really show and see what this team can be. All right, Connor Hellebuck. Remo, this team needs to go 10-0 and out of the gate and then get Ray Petkow on the phone and get a deal done. <laughs> I'm ready to run through a wall for this guy. <laughs> oh, my God. He's, the confidence he has says what Winnipeg is, who he is, very outdoors. We've Outdoors lifestyle. We've seen what he's got fishing on his uh, helmet. Yeah. I mean, this dog looks like a wolf. I mean, yeah. you couldn't be much better. I mean, in a better spot like this. I said this a million times over the past few years, but I don't think it's ever more appropriate than right now. Believe in yourself. 
like the way Connor Hallebach believes in his in himself, and I'm pretty sure that good things will follow. Uh, one more from Helly, and this had nothing to do with the contract or really the team. It's about his new and um, returning goaltending partner in uh, LB, Loren Brossois, coming back after winning a cup with the Golden Knights. Yeah, I love seeing him. Um, the second I saw that, it was the first message I made and the first call I made. We, we, we love that guy, and he's, he's such a great goaltender, and I, I truly believe that he's going to push me, and, and he's going to play. He's going to be what this team definitely needs. I think he's going to help us get us over some edges, and um, I'm really looking forward to being his partner again. I know we thrive together, and I know I'd like to think I helped him thrive too, so I think we're going to push each other, and it's going to be a great relationship again. Even just to follow up on that, even if it means maybe a few less starts, if he's playing well and wants a little more of the net, that's something you're, I guess if it's benefiting the team, it's overall pretty good? Yeah, you know, I, I feel like I get that question a lot on, do you need this many starts? No, I don't. I need whatever is going to help this team succeed. Um, I can go in there and they listen to what I have to say and I can tell them what I feel like gives me the best rhythm and that gives me the best chance of play. But at the end of the day, I tell them, do what you think you need to do to get this team to succeed and I will adapt around you. Um, I, I know you're going to say I'm getting older, I might need less, but no, I feel young. I got young bones and I feel great. Um, that being said, I mean, Elby's a great goaltender. If he's in, I'm going to be his first number one fan. All right, so there we go. And by the way, Reem, Shout out to uh, to you and Connor, and particularly Connor for getting our new WST mic with that. Uh, what do you call those things? That's a mic flash. A mic, mic flash. flash. There you go, folks. Kellebach, there's TSN, and then right there, WST. The debut, I think, in a video format of the WST mic flashes. That, that's the first one. Pretty funny story. Showed this is from the Jets video. You know, I got all excited for the Hellebuck scrum. I'm getting in position. Connor's in there with the mic. I got the camera. We're all ready to record. I go hit the button and it doesn't record. I'm like, what the heck's going on here? Somehow my camera got locked. They hit the lock button. Couldn't record anything. I couldn't even do anything on the camera. I had to Google while I'm in the back of this scrum. How do I unlock the camera? After like five minutes of Googling... I look at the damn thing. There's a button right there. It says lock, unlock. I'm just like, oh, my God. So, yes, the mic is in there, but uh, was not actually recording uh, to anything. So <laughs> that was the first one. Lessons were learned. Uh, we'll be back for the next one. It's funny. Paul Friesen's like, am I in your way? I'm like, Paul, camera's not even working right here. Go, go right ahead. Yeah. <laughs> go, go right ahead. Go Listen, right ahead. I, I know this is shocking everybody that joins us regularly. I know we look like about the smoothest, most well-oiled machine in all of media, but every now and then, you know, the camera is locked and the operator doesn't know how to unlock it. Um, an order of Sergeant Tacos gets uh, flipped shortly before the show starts and a massive cleanup needs to happen. I mean, there there are some things that would absolutely shock and stun you folks when uh, when the product just continues to be so seamless here on our YouTube channel and, of course, with the podcast. Um, that was great stuff from Hellebuck. And, you know, and I'm just looking at the comments. I was wondering, and I wasn't looking at any comments while we were doing those and I was talking to Remus, but I was wondering whether many of you Jet fans had sort of the same reaction to um, you know, to 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 Hellebox. and uh, I think that, I mean, everyone's pretty fired up. I I don't know if Connor could have handled himself any better. Um, that was as a ten out of ten. I mean, he didn't promise anything. He didn't say anything that, you know, seemingly was BS. But for a guy that said, "Hey, everything is a possibility, and we'll see," it all comes back to success. Um, and listen, if the Winnipeg Jets can find a way to grow as a team, to have a great season, and to convince this guy to stick around. Um, I, I've said for a long time, you don't get better by getting rid of your best player. And I still think Connor Hellebuck is the best player. And to be honest, you in, in a lot of ways, Reem, hearing that, that's the guy. Like Adam Lowry's the captain, and you know, obviously Josh and Mark are part of that leadership group. But to be honest, I don't know if we could hear a better sort of leadership message than what Hellebuck has to say. And it starts with himself, but 
that confidence, that belief, and it all being about winning, I think is what just about everybody wants to hear. Yeah, I mean, he thinks the team can win. He has belief in everyone, belief in himself, not closing the door on anything. I mean, he said all the right things. Now, he didn't come out and say, I mean, I want to be here. I want to sign. He's not didn't say anything that was, you know, clearly a he lot. He said he loves it here. Yeah, said, yeah, said, I mean. I mean, there's a lot of things that go into it. I mean, it seems like he has fit in quite well here, you know, with, with his dog, the fishing. Obviously, he's got a young family. And, um, you know, sometimes people want to be closer to home. We've seen that happen before in NHL free agency. It's certainly not unique to Winnipeg. Uh, but it certainly, I think, makes these conversations around hell about his future, I think, a little bit more a little bit more upbeat, to be perfectly honest with you, amongst the fans around it. Let's get back yeah. to Shifley, though. we got a few more minutes. Sorry. I'll, I'll just add, something? I mean, he says that he's making it very clear. He wants to win. He wants to win. And, you know, if the team doesn't have a product in front of him that's able to win, well, then it's not really his fault. Um, about He's putting it in the team's court, saying, hey, you guys, you know, if he doesn't re-sign here, he's saying, hey, you, you, know, you guys didn't put a team in front of me. That was, you know, a, a what a competitor or a you know a contender. That might be biting a bit more off. I mean, listen, Fine. when you're signing a new contract, you got to be paid fairly. I mean, the t like there's a bunch of things that have to work, but it's almost like it's a non-starter if he doesn't believe that he has a chance to win the cup. Yes, like he's not going to somewhere that's going to pay him fifteen million a year, but they're going to lose sixty-five oh. games a season. I mean, like Johnny Gaudreau in Columbus uh, well, last I, year. <laughs> <laughs> the most bizarre thing about that was what he was—he took way less to go and do that, which is still one of the most bizarre sagas of NHL free agency that uh, we've ever seen. But let's get to Mark Scheifele. We played those early clips right before we uh, talked to Scotty and Brandon. Um, and Rima, let's get back to twelve. Uh, much like. The Hellebuck situation, the Hellebuck conversation, there was a lot about the contract. Uh, Mark said that he hasn't thought about it too much. Um, and uh, here is, well, actually, did we play number three? Um, no, he didn't play three. Okay, so let's go back to that because he was asked if he thought during the summer uh, that he wouldn't be here this year. Honestly, I just kind of you know, let my agent handle all that. You know, I just uh, go about my summer and golf and work out and skate and you know whatever happens happens you know I, I, I trust in my in my representatives and um, you know trust in the team and just go and do my job all right um, uh, Mark continued on uh, you know was asked just I mean what would go into his decision to sign and potentially re-sign here in Winnipeg you know I think it's, it's too much to speculate um, you know we don't know anything has happened there's a, there's a lot of guys in the same situation as me and you know I'm not gonna I'm not gonna speculate I'm not I, you know, all I can do is control what I can control, and that's, you know, going out every day and giving it my all and working my hardest and, and working on my game and improving, and that's all I'm going to do. Sorry, maybe I should rephrase that. What's important to you in considering potentially resigning with the Jets? You know, obviously I want to win. You know, I'm a competitor. I want to I wanna win a Stanley Cup. That's, you know, that's everyone's goal is to, is to you know, win a Stanley Cup, and, you know, that, that never changes. All right, so there's Mark, uh, Mark Shifley on, uh, on that. Um, you know, the, the one thing that Mark didn't say, and I'll kind of credit him with this, because, I mean, from all accounts, I mean, I don't believe there's been a lot of conversations, um, you know, about, you know, an extension. Uh, and, and say what you will about the way last season ended and the year before as well. Um, this is Mark Shifley's 13th training camp with the Winnipeg Jets, and he has been a huge part of this organization ever since he turned pro and came here to Winnipeg and has been part of, well, I mean, honestly, the, the highest highs that this organization's had, in particular, his incredible performance in the playoffs against Nashville in that epic seven-gamer where uh, the Jets got to the uh, got to the conference finals. But, Rewo, did you hear Steven Stamkos yesterday? Yes. So, so Stamkos met the media for the first time and basically said that, you know, he was upset and somewhat hurt that he hadn't been offered a contract extension by the Tampa Bay Lightning. And I'm not sure if people were prepared or expecting to hear that, but he was very frank. And listen, he's a guy that's won a cup. Um, he's, he's done so many great things for that organization. 
and of course did re-sign that eight-year deal when a lot of people thought that he might go to free agency. Uh, but it's very clear that this is a business. And if you thought that he was going to get the uh, handshake deal for everything that he'd done in the past, I'm not sure that that's there. But he was pretty honest about his feelings of the fact that he is on an expiring contract right now. Yeah, the Stamkos one, you know, talk about guys going into a year with an expiring deal. Pasternak was the big one last year. Um, Stamkos came in and said, yeah, he was disappointed that what he hadn't had any, hadn't been given an extension. And, I mean, I don't blame him. You want to have that next contract. I'm sure he likes it in Tampa Bay. And then they asked the GM, uh, Breezeball, about it. And he basically said, hey, we need to see what's going on with the cap. We need to see what's going on with our team. I'm sure they're kind of reluctant um, to commit dollars to a guy. What is he, turning 34 years old? And they want to think about, okay, how is he going to perform this year? What's going to happen? So, I, um, you know, the Jets aren't the only team with guys uh, who are pending UFAs. You know, into this season, we've talked to Shafley and Hellebuck, but yeah, around the league, Stamkos did come out and say he was disappointed. We didn't really get that from Shafley. He never said he never really said how he felt about anything. Or Hellebuck, they just he just said, or Shafley just said they hadn't had discussions, but he was yeah, open to that, it. Yeah, well, I mean, this is the next one. I mean, he basically said, "Hey, listen, I'm a, I'm a hockey player. I let my agents handle everything." You know, it's it's uh, you know I just I just let my agents handle that and let the you know that's up to you know them and Chevy and my job is to play hockey and work on my game and, and try to succeed with the, the Winnipeg Jets and you know that's the you know that's my thought process through all. Yeah. So it's not like oh, I don't want to be bugged once the season starts. That conversation doesn't take. No, that that's not that's not in my mind at all. It's just I'm I'm going to be a hockey player and you know the the business side of it is isn't isn't my uh, isn't in my realm of expertise. Yeah, it sounds like, um, you know what, focus on what you can focus on. And uh, I don't know if all of a sudden his new agents and the Winnipeg Jets get together and uh, there's legitimate offers and conversations, let them know. But at the same time, uh, the job right now is on the ice. Speaking of on the ice, let's talk about the hockey side of things. And uh, Mark was asked uh, what he thought about the squad this year and the roster changes in the offseason. Yeah, obviously losing, uh, you know, Wheels and Doobie are, are big losses. They were, you know, you know, big, big voices. You know, obviously tremendous players, and, and wish them all the luck. Uh, you know, with their new teams, but we got some, we got some new guys. Um, you know, got to skate with them a few times over the last number of days, and you know, they look great. Um, you know, they're hardworking. They're, they're, you know, it's exciting. You know, it's still, it's still tough. It's the first day, so you know, you're not really sure. No, you don't, won't know till probably game one of the season. But um, you know, it's exciting, of course. All right, Mark Shifley, and uh, we've got a little bit more, so we'll try and roll through these. Uh, well, hey, I brought this up right off the bat. It's sort of weird. No Blake Wheeler today. Here's Shifley on the first training camp he's ever experienced without Blake Wheeler. Oh, for sure. Um, you know, you know, he was our captain. You know, he uh, he was he was the heart and soul of this team. You know, the amount of you know broken bones he played with. You know, the amount of amazing amazing plays he made. You know, for the team and for us. You know, he was a he was a warrior through and through. And you know, obviously, it's 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 tough to not have him here, but you know, like I said before, it's the nature of the beast, and 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 you know, hope he you know has an amazing year in New York, and um, you know, wishing him all the luck. You know, talk to him here and there as well. So, um, you know, obviously, it's going to be it's going to be different. He's a you know, obviously a good friend, and like I said, just wish him wish him the best. Yeah, got to be a little weird for Mark. I mean, he uh, you know for uh, so long was a line mate. I mean, uh, you know, really some of the leaders of this club and um, no Blake this season. Uh, they do have a new captain, though. Adam Lowry is that guy. Mark uh, expanded on uh, what he thought about 17 getting the C on his jersey. Yeah, obviously very, very happy for him. You know, Adam is a you know, guy I've been with through it all, lived with him for two years way back in the day and, um, you know, grown up with him and, and have a lot, of, a lot of great memories with him. So I'm obviously very, very happy for him. And, and know he's uh, he's going to be a great job, great guy for the job, and um, you know very excited for him. So, there any thought that that might be something you'd like to do? Do you think how the Winnipeg Jets, and do you think your contract situation may be factored into that? You know, I don't spend much much time thinking about it. You know, it's uh, you know that's out of my control. All I can do is what's in my in my control. And you know, like I said before, I'm very very happy for for Adam, and and you know very excited for the season. All right, so there's uh, Chife on the uh, the captaincy. A uh, little bit more on Blake. Um, you know, with his absence today, uh, Chifley talked about what he learned from Blake Wheeler over the course of these last seasons. Everything, honestly. Like he was a he was a guy. 
um, you know, him and Andrew Ladd, I'd say the two, two guys that, um, you know, mentored me, you know, good days, bad days, helped me through a lot and obviously played a lot of, a lot of, you know, amazing games with Blake. He, you know, he, you know, he made me the player I am today, you know, helped me, helped me, you know, gave me a lot of backdoor tap-ins, you know, he was, you know, you know, he's one of the, he's, he is, he is the best passer I've ever played with, um, you know, by a mile, um, you know, so obviously he meant a lot to me and taught me a lot and mentored me a lot and, um, you know, he'll always be a close friend of mine and um, so obviously, you know, lost a lot of good friends in this business, uh, you know, but it's, it's, you know, it's the nature of the beast and you just got to move on and continue to, to, to strive forward and, and learn from the, the lessons they taught, they tell, they teach you and, and go from there. And here's just a little bit more from Shifley getting a little bit more specific into uh, what he uh, brings forward from his uh, long relationship with Blake Wheeler on the Jets. You know, I think it, it's it's every day. You know, you I, I watched. You know, I saw every every bump, every bruise, every um, you know, every time he needed treatment from some for something. You know, that guy was a was an absolute warrior. You know, I don't think you guys know half the things he he played through and what he you know what he did to get himself ready to, to play in a hockey game. He was a he was an absolute warrior and and you know put his best foot forward every single game and. You know, like I said before, one of the best passers I've ever seen. And, you know, he was a guy that just every single day put his work boots on and, and went to work. And, um, you know, good day, bad day, he was out there working his hardest. What so area Dave of is... your game are you hoping to improve on this season? Everything. You know, every every year is uh, you know, a year to grow in, in every aspect of the game. And, um, you know, this is like no other. All right. So uh, Mark Shifley and one more from Mark. And this is on uh, a guy that not a former line mate of his, but a guy that started off training camp on the right side, that, of course, is Gabriel Velarde, ex of the Los Angeles Kings. Here's Shifley on Velarde. Yeah, you know, it's exciting. He's a, you know, he's a great kid, um, you know, loves the game, loves to talk the game. Um, you know, he's definitely got some jam to him. He's, he's, a, he's got a knack for scoring, and you know, obviously we played against him a couple times last year, and, you know, he's a, he's a fantastic player, and I'm excited to, you know, get into, get into game form and, and, and get to know each other and get to know each other's tendencies. And, um and, you know, he's, a, he's, a, he's an awesome kid and, you know, really excited to, to get to know him a little more. All right, so there's Mark Shifley today. A lot from Shife in front of the assembled media scrum that was as big as any I think we've seen in Winnipeg. Jeez, um, I can't remember the last time as big a one of mainly local media there, but uh, everyone was out and, you know, different messages and certainly different tones from both Shifley and Hellebuck, Reem, but... For a team that I think wants to put a lot of these questions behind them and just focus on training camp, the exhibition season, and getting a good start, I'll give both of them high marks for doing what they needed to do, saying some things that I think will maybe curry a little bit more favor within the fan base and uh, most importantly, do their best to not have all those questions be distractions once you get past day one of camp. Yeah, if I had to give a grade on how they handled the media, I mean, they were ready for it. Uh, Hellebuck, we said 10 out of 10. I thought Mark Shifley was an 8 or 9. Didn't say Stanley Cup contender as many times as Hellebuck, so so maybe you get docked a few. But uh, he went with the, I let my agent handle that. I'm here to play hockey for the Winnipeg Jets. I thought it was uh, it was done really well. Hadn't both said they hadn't closed the door. Um, so you like that. So... I, I like what they said. It was great. And I think it's getting you excited. We have uh, day one today, day two tomorrow, training camp. Uh, you know, sorry, not training camp. First preseason game is Sunday, Fan Fest Saturday. And we'll be there uh, this time tomorrow doing the show from training camp. So that all should be pretty, uh, pretty cool. But one thing we haven't really touched on, Huss, was the Nikolai Ehlers news. We did get the update from Rick Bonus after the practice today. Okay, good. I obviously have been talking nonstop. I mean, fill, uh, fill okay, me so, and everybody else in. So here is what happened. Uh, what he went on and skated and then went to the trainer and went off. Um, here's Rick Bonus. I see a number of Jets meet, including Dave Manuk from Legal Curve, tweeting out uh, Ehlers dealing with neck spasms, which started yesterday. They, they'll hold him off the ice tomorrow. So neck spasms for Ehlers. And now the question in chat is, well, how many hours of sleep did he get yesterday? <laughs> did he get his regular 13, 14, or did he only get 11? And that's a callback to Yusei Kikuchi, who said, what, he got a cramp because he only got 11? Do you realize that Kikuchi, by the way, he was just joking about that whole thing and just having some fun with the reporters? Was Dusty? he? Yes, yes. Oh, I thought absolute... that was... 
I thought, but it's like the new Kawasaki on the uh, like the uh, the, the the Joker of the Blue Jays. Well, but is that his real sleep? Like I can see like joking, like yeah, that's that's not why he got a cramp. But, like, does he sleep that? I mean, if you're a pitcher, you no. need to be ready. He doesn't no, I get think that. He was he was just having some fun with the with the media. Oh. He apparently does not sleep twelve to fourteen hours a day, which broke me. I really wanted to. We, to I wanted to that believe that, was that. The case <laughs> that was the case going uh, going forward. Um, we uh, oh, this is a great start, and uh, yeah, as Rima said, we are going to be there tomorrow, and we will be there <clears throat> on um, on Saturday for Fan Fest. There is a one of the ranks is going to be um, where the uh, New Jerseys are launched. Illegal Curve is going to be there. The guys are going to be live from nine to eleven. We'll be right beside there, cranking out some content. Potentially might go live. So for you YouTubers, A, subscribe to the channel. And obviously, it's completely free. But turn your notifications on. Because it'll remind you when we're starting regularly. But also, in the occasion that something big happens, or like Saturday, the potential of some sort of an afternoon show, you'll at least know that we're live and can jump in and... Uh, can chat with all uh, all of your friends and the rest of the WSTers there, and we will have some more information as well if you're at FanFest on the uh, the ticket package. Uh, but the information's all there at WinnipegSportsTalk.com, as well as a link in the description to go jump on those and buy them. And uh, hopefully, we'll continue growing our crew and cannot wait for that game on the 17th. Um, hey, big shout out to our friends at Little Brown Jug. Of course, last Wednesday we had that amazing day out. Uh, on the patio, another beautiful, beautiful evening like we've had for about the last week or so. Um, they got another big, big shaker coming up on Saturday. It'll be the biggest part of the year at, uh, at Little Brown Jug. It's the Nuit Blanche party, Saturday night, street party. Hargrave is going to be closed off. There'll be entrances on both sides of Hargrave. All the Little Brown Jug beer is going to be there. Great entertainment. Um if you're looking for something fun to do, post Fan Fest, mark it down. Little Brown Jug on William Avenue, Hargrave Street Party, Saturday night. Um, and again, congratulations to our friends at Assiniboy Downs on a great, great season. Special thanks to Sherry, Sharon, and of course our pal Darren Dunn. Um, Remo, did you do any? Uh, did you do any damage? Did you win anything on the final day? Um, so I bet, I remember how I was betting on all those like chalk, uh, trifectas, yeah. like the yes. fav like three favorites. And I've talked about what do you win, uh, when you win. So I bet the so one of them was a six, like $6. I won nine Oh five. So I won net $3. And this okay. other one, it was a big favorite on, on race two. I bet six and one. Three dollars and ninety cents. So I get. <laughs> so, I mean, in total, I bet twenty, and I got back thir uh, twelve. No, 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 no. Thir thirteen. Uh, had, yes, thir um... thirteen. I got back there, so I lost seven yesterday. So, but I mean, I bet on like dumb. That's dumb <clears throat> stuff. Like that's dumb. Taking the three favorites sometimes it works out, but. Yeah, in I mean, a big, big race, it might come through, but in some of those smaller ones, I mean, if you don't get the most unlikely possibility of the six, uh, and it's just even chalkier, yeah, I mean, it could end up being uh, being very low. I guess there might have been a scratch in race four, so my exacta got returned, and then I did hit the triactor in race five. Three, four, oh, how seven. much was that? Uh, 14. Um, oh, so that's pretty what, good. Yeah, it was. Uh, yeah, Lucky Chucky, Big Ticket, and Justa Buster. Good old Justa Buster. Um, but yeah, what a season it was been. Congratulations to everyone. Another huge, huge year at the track. And big shout out and appreciation to our friends at Assiniboia Downs for the support of WST. A um, couple things I should let you know. For all you Xers out there, I know I drive <laughs> some people crazy when I call Twitter X. Uh, but regardless of what you want to call it, tonight, coming up, at what time are we going to do this again? I think 5.30 our time. Twitter Spaces. Myself, JBM, 
Jake Bolin Moss at the uh, at Cool Bet Canada. Give them a follow on Twitter, X, whatever you want to call it, and uh, join us then if you want to get into. We're going to be talking a little Blue Jays as well as some props and some betting convo for this Thursday nighter tonight between the Giants and the San Francisco 49ers. That's all up over on the uh, Cool Bet page. Fun lock shop today. And we've already got the CFL partner parlay in. Dusty and I um, really like the you know the Riders in Ottawa. Edmonton plus six and a half at home to BC, and the Calgary Stampeders at home. We uh, we actually just went with the money line for the Riders and the Stamps, and then got an extra point with the Elks up to seven and a half, and that saved us that extra point in the partner parlay that cashed last week with the uh, with the Niners. So uh, that saved us from being screwed twice as hard by Sean McVay on that ridiculous field goal at the end of the game, uh, which you talked about earlier. But uh, plus 555 with a nice little boost from the guys. So if you like these West teams, Riders to win in Ottawa, Stampeders to win at home against Montreal, and the Elks to keep it within 7.5 against BC, it's up right now at 555. There's tons of exclusives for the game tonight. Um, I actually like this Christian McCaffrey prop. McCaffrey to have 75 rushing yards, 25 receiving yards, and a touchdown is plus 240. Uh, I normally, everyone that knows the lock shop knows that I love the primetime field goal prop. It's actually plus 135 tonight for four field goals or more. That being said, I'm not betting it. Very nervous. I, I don't know whether, where the Giants get, we get points tonight. And, uh, I think the Niners are going to be putting it into the end zone. So I'm actually shying away. I'm taking a one one night hiatus from the field goal for the over seven, over three and a half field goals. Um, but check the exclusives. We're working on our partner parley for the National Football League. We'll get that in tomorrow. And tomorrow at noon, I'll be coming to you from the Iceplex. It'll be on Edmonton Sports Talk feed. Myself and Dustin Nielsen, Friday. NFL, best bets, lock shop. And if you haven't played a cool bet before, use the promo code WST for a 100% bonus up to 200 bucks on uh, on the uh, on the lock shop when you make your first deposit. So uh, all there, Jays tonight are an underdog, plus 120, trying to get the sweep. Um, but Garrett Cole's on the mound for the Yankees. So that's why New York is a bit of a favorite. Minus 135. Got all sorts of props for that as well. And the full slate of games in the NFL. But the game tonight, Giants, 10.5 point underdogs in San Francisco against the Niners. Total 43.5. And, and if you think the Giants can shock the world, pretty juicy number. Plus 455 on the money line. You should do no such thing as even consider that minus 526. On the Niners. Um, fun show today, Reem, and fun to be back at the rink. Can't wait for tomorrow to do it live. We'll do it live. Yeah, I'm excited. Uh, I got to pack all my stuff up, get in the wagon, bring it over there. We'll be What's set up. What's your confidence up. level on re- marbles working remotely? Uh, pretty confident. I'm pretty confident. We got the new laptop, so hopefully it doesn't melt. Big uh, test, when, yes. When we bring <laughs> it there. it doesn't melt. Uh, so... <laughs> It'll be new on that. So tune in to see some fun stuff, right? I think that'll work out. And follow all our social medias. They're in the description here on YouTube. Closing in 10K subs, us. We're getting closer. I said we were going to get over here in September. I think we've had a bit, bit of a jump with posting videos every day. I had the video of you and Dan Robertson, Jets play by Playboys and TSN, talking about it uh, yesterday. You know, Came Dan up this was morning. Great. It was nice to see Dan Sawyer back there. Uh, the uh, the whole gang is back together. Hey, uh, just back to Jets training camp for a minute before we go. I do want to give you a, a, a why one more why not question of the day for not Autocorp over at Waverly and McGilvery. And you know now that we've got like we knew today was going to be all about Shifley and all about Hellebuck. Um, we've heard that. We've had our conversations. Now <clears throat> all systems go on training camp. Um, we're going to start a chance to see Colby Barlow signed his contract today. Elias Salmonson was out there with Josh Morrissey. Chaz Lucius we saw. Uh, Brad Lambert's in the other group. 
of those young players, which Jets, we'll just call them prospects, anybody from the Penticton tournament, which Winnipeg Jet are you most looking forward to show what they can do in the exhibition season? That's today's Why Not Question of the Day. Hit us up in the chat, or if you're listening afterwards, hit us up on social media at Sports Talk WPG. And I have to admit, Reem, um, you know, Elias would have been at the top of my list coming in, and he still probably is there. But Colby Barlow is right there as well. I mean, I'm sure we'll hear from him in the next day or so from signing his first NHL deal. And uh, I'll tell you what, he's got a big league shot, did not look. I mean, he looks older than most younger kids, so certainly doesn't look out of place. Um, but I'm really looking forward to seeing what he looks like in that Jet jersey. Uh, and, of course, home games begin on Monday. Exhibition games, that is, the 25th and the 27th. I believe the 27th is the uh, is the name of the um, the season ticket holder appreciation name. See, Missing Monk, Solomonson, great answer. Rob Mahoney, Chaz Lucius, T. Conopoli, of course, it's Bauer. And Phyllis is on Salmonson and Barlow. Craig Smith with Barlow. Matt Healy for Earl James. SK on Barlow. Donnie Boy, Chiprikov, great answer. Another guy that really stood out. We, of course, didn't see him. He was in the afternoon squad while we're here. And uh, Rima, I guess just one more thing. I guess I didn't react live to it. A neck spasm to keep Nikolai Ehlers out of this first skate. That's about as good of a... Like, I don't really think that that's anything that's going to be problematic, that's going to be bugging him all year long. Touch wood, who knows, but when I heard him leave early on, I had uh, I had larger worries. Yeah, you thought it would be like a hamstring or a groin or something that would be lingering for a while. A spasm sounds like it was just something that was uncomfortable that you can get past. Hopefully, assuming they're being truthful uh, on the injury here. Uh, so. Fingers crossed, I, and I do wonder if one of those young players you mentioned does step in. We never really touched on the Colby Barlow ex, you know, contract. ELC is just like an ELC, I think, still likely to start the year, more than likely to start in, in junior, but nice to have that formality out of the way for him. I mean, not much else you can really add there, but you know, maybe you'd like to see him It would make... be so great if he actually did make the team, and I realize the numbers is highly unlikely. Just because the chances are, like, next year, like, all those guys could be rookies at the same time. Although, I guess back in 1.0, Solani, Kachuk, Jamnov were rookies in the same season, and that was basically the Jets' number one line for the better part of the year as well. So, it would be pretty fun. If you could have rookies that compare to that group, it would be very good th- a very good thing for the team going forward. Um, Blue Jays tonight at 6. NFL just after 7. And then we're live tomorrow from the uh, Hockey for All Center, getting you ready for Fan Fest on Saturday, where we'll be there as well. We'll catch up with you then, folks. Shout out to all the WSTers that uh, were wearing WST merch at the Iceplex. We uh, always appreciate you showing the colors. And uh, hopefully we'll see you tomorrow. Say hi if you see us. Uh, Catch you tomorrow on Winnipeg Sports Talk, live from the Hockey for All Center on day two of Winnipeg Jets training camp. Enjoy the games tonight, everybody. Oh, my God. Shut it down. Let's go home. Thanks for tuning in to Winnipeg Sports Talk Daily. Make sure to subscribe on YouTube and your favorite podcast feed at winnipegsportstalk.com.